Daddy's Dungeon. Daddy's what? The fuck is Daddy's Dungeon? Daddy's Dungeon. <laughs> Daddy's fucking Dungeon. All of you! Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? <laughs> There, uh, when I was driving by, I saw a frat house, and I was like, "This is the most random spot for a frat house, like right there, a block away from the Haven." Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of giving college town like Claremont's the same way. Where I went to school, Chapman's kind of the same way. It's like in a suburban-ish area, right by like a downtown sort of old town vibe. Yeah, but that that part of Pomona, that's where all the, the hookers and the fence at. The cow, yeah, cow, 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 Poly, they're on that vibe. For sure. I mean, if it was around like the Pitzer area, that's a yeah. little yeah. more on the higher end Pomona, you know? Maybe that's like the cheap frat that people are joining, you know? I don't know. <laughs> all right. I just seen a video of this frat, and it was the dumbest thing. You know they used to do like those, what, salutes, but it was like a dance? It was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Like, they don't do that oh, yeah. anymore. I'm not about that shit. What is that? What's it called? Or the hazing? You know how they do the hazing? I mean, I'm not about that either. I don't really like most people, especially in my school. It's a bunch of frat nerds, and a lot of the social aspects seem to be around, like, fraternities or sororities. And I didn't like those people, so I thought, like, why would I want to pay to be around them? And I liked, I think at the end of the day, even though I had some issue, I would have been, I was probably happier with my parents than there but like it's it's hard to like when i'll just you know spending my own money on on gas to one relate to people who like their parents paying for everything like at a private school that has a really high acceptance rate that kind of just equates to a bunch of of rich kids um yeah like the parking lots like mercedes rolls royce and like i can't really relate to when i talk to people um, so and I wouldn't want to live around them or be with them because I'm like usually just by yourself. I would yeah I, I would just be by myself. I had a couple of uh, of friends who are on a similar vibe and then I would just you know after you know and then I would close enough to to program to go to shows after class. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. So you said you went to Chapman University, right? Yeah. Don't mind me asking, would you uh, graduate? With. Oh, yeah, I got a degree. Technically, I got a degree in business and usually you get an e- emphasis because it's pretty e- general. And you take some specific classes. So I emphasized in marketing and then I took a minor in analytics, which was like some computer science classes, some st- uh, st- statistical modeling classes and things like that. Yeah. So you have, uh, aside from the whole like interacting with the with the rich kids and all that, yeah. the education yeah. itself is very good. Uh, they have quality professors. They they pride themselves on it being small classrooms. So the biggest class around them is maybe twenty five people. So c- comparatively to like a hundred, two hundred a person lecture hall, um, and, we, and and they're getting better. Like they had and they have these crazy like. Like in their theater, like regular talks with really popular individuals, like Billie Eilish and whoever her brother was, was there. Shaq was there recently. Uh, whatever the guys who played the main role in Everything Everywhere All at Once mm-hmm. was there. Because they also have a really, really popular and quality film school, which I want to say some alumni consists of screen people, well, someone who screen played um, the Smile horror film, the people who wrote the screenplay for... Uh, or the, the two brothers uh, who wrote Stranger Things. So a lot of people like to go there for that purpose, to go to that film school, because probably besides like USC or something, uh, which has a lot of funding, they're really good. But it is interesting. Um, it's a private school, so in a private school... <laughs> that yeah, in a sense like, like that means like like the faculty and a lot of the uh, not the faculty but more so the 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 founders and the donors and the committee are like very Republican because if they're giving money that, that themselves they're not government individuals they're probably just people who own a lot of wealth. Yeah. Uh, a person who's named after the business building and the whole school of business, uh, George Ar- Ar- Arduous is like a billionaire real estate mogul who owns a lot of the r- real estate and especially the rental markets in Orange County which is like kind of evil right because you're um, but also there's some sketchy thing like he was like Spanish ambassador for for Spain for the US under like George Bush's cabinet after giving half a million dollars to the RNC so like stuff like that I'm like it's cool but 
I don't know, you know. And then they they had like their own like mini version of like like a, a, a encampment for the whole uh, Palestine or Palestine thing. Um, and it actually it worked in some ways. They only did it because they were blocking certain in, in individuals from going in and, and speaking um, for causing some sort of uproar. Which at a school like Chapman, it would be pretty low key because most of the student base is like at least right leaning or or uh, libertarian or, or or middle ground. Yeah. Not to get all political. You're good. Two oh. podcast is too political. <laughs> <laughs> We, <laughs> we used to say that all the time, like, oh, not to get political, or yeah, what was that? that? What would you used to say? Oh, yeah, then you just say some, some random shit, yeah. Um, so, you, do you have a job, like, for your major yet? Exactly, yes. I, I do. I was able to, to, to get one two, three months before graduating, awesome. which in the current mar- market, especially within marketing, because a lot of kids were like, oh, my God, I don't really have to learn anything for marketing. I just use my brain and think. I'll totally do it. So, it's super oversaturated. And people who work in like really big companies are extreme go getters and, and great for them. Or, you know, develop marketing on their personal sense, which usually equates to uh, making your own social media, yada yada, because you're building your portfolio in that, in that sense by yourself instead of having to get through the door somewhere. Um, but yeah, I was able to get a job, not really through Chapman, most of the, most. We threw my own net network, so I work at the United Theater on Broadway, which was called the Theater by the Ace Hotel. Um, the property management company was hiring Ace to do, to do both the hotel and the theater, but they left. There was going to be some sort of buyout from like a company like Ticketmaster or whatever, but that fell through. So the property management company manages the theater, and then they hired a company called Style or a company called Casa, um, which mainly... Uh, prioritizes a lot of their inventory and like buying out large apartment complexes and managing them on Airbnbs. But they do some sort of tech forward hotels like no, like access codes, no key cards, no 24 seven. Um, so is that what they're trying to do with your? That's what they're totally doing. Yeah, and that's fine. And this, so it's in like in like a transitional period with the ho- the hotel. So you think it's like an upgrade? No, it's not, um, because Ace was, a, was like a big company, so they had a really, really good social media, and they had like crazy rooftop parties and stuff, um, uh, with you know mixed with like a lot of pe- people who would uh, play at the theater. So like I think Olivia Rodrigo played at the theater and did like a ro- ro- rooftop thing there. It's a really good ro- rooftop. It's small, but it's got the classic. Like, you see all the major buildings in downtown uh, uh, LA, and, sure. and and it's cool. Sure, it's awesome. It's fine. Um, it, I I never really. Spent too much time in LA until now, and I think I kind of like it. There's quirks to it. I don't love a big city because I've grew up in Orange County my entire life. Orange County and IE because my uh, my mom would live in Chino with where my grandpa lives, uh-huh. so I go over there like you know every other week, every other weekend or or whenever. And um, so living in like suburban areas has kind of been my thing. So I do love just living in Fullerton where I live now and it's got a dope vibe and it's just, it's safe, it's chill and I love it. I just hate the traffic in a big city. It's, it's insane. It. It's psycho. I do it. It's so ruthless. The, that's the good thing about my job too is that I can, I'm pretty variable on when I can start or feel flexible. Um, so if I don't have anything to do, I can just do an 11 to 7 and skip all the traffic. But for the most part, I like to do shit. So, um, I do the hour to, or hour and a half drive drive back every day, which I'm trying to like mix it up a little bit. Ask to do a couple days remote just because I'm getting a little burnt out. And they let you do that? Um, I'm working on it. It's been like an every once in a while thing. I mean, Bruin's going to do a 10-day run, so I'm trying to like really, really work hard to uh, be able to not use all my all my P- PTO for that because I think my girlfriend would be upset because she wants to go on all kinds of trips. So like work on the road a bit, which is totally manageable, extremely. Like 99% of my job I, I can do on just the computer. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I go back to the point. I, I work for the theater. I'm their marketing coordinator, um, and they were... Th- I was, they were nice enough to let me work like, you know, 25, 30 hours a week while I was graduating. And it's pretty cool. I'm like their sole marketing person, which mainly consists of me coordinating with our 
like promoters, which at the moment is like companies like AEG and Live Nation and Golden Voice. Um, so, and that's just really, those exchanges on my end are really just, they give us the, the add the assets, let us know what time they want doors, what time they want to announce. So then I coordinate that on like email marketing, on social media marketing, and on the venue side, it's mainly like any sort of individual things that we're trying to market, like for more money and assets, we're trying to um, like rent out our marquee for like individuals and things like that. They want to do like cute shit. So could this marketing like that you do now for your work, can you use that at all for like ruin like per- totally personal stuff? I totally. I probably put a lot more thought into our social media uh, in that sense. Just I not to be like not to make it like uh, corny or whatever. I just try to make it like cool, like you know, like plan things. And for the most part, it's it's popping. Like I'll, I'll get bummed and I'm like I put a lot of work into the video and then it flop. I'm like whatever, you know, because because I'm just a nerd like that. So I do most of like the social media posting stuff um, just because I like doing it. Just like how Sergio's been helping us with like booking. And what about provoked? Did you- I just got the login. I haven't. Ruins like, at least from the start, it's getting a lot more everyone now. But from the start, it was like my thing. So yeah, it's like your baby. Yeah, but but uh, I you know learning with everyone, I respect their opinions and they have good ideas, and uh. so we're trying to, and especially with things getting a little more stressful for ruin for me sometimes, I have a lot of block with it. So we're trying out di- different ways to link up, maybe get one or two writers in the room to sort of spark things, so we can get an EP out faster than from what was you know our la- our first release to now. Uh. So as far as the birth of ruin. Would who whose idea was it to get right. that thing started? Start, let, let's start. So basically, I was playing in my band prior to this called Defamation. We were it was okay, it was fine, and when I we I finished writing and recording our EP, I just wanted to do something. I wanted to sing in a band. I just wanted to have it be fun. So I didn't really put much thought to it. So I wrote like three and a half songs and then showing it to people and they were fucking with it. Like, especially, I was just trying to get like baseline people down, like Benny, who's a great drummer. And then I was living with my parents at the time. So I recorded, well, we, we recorded drums at Benny's house. It was like his Scarlet 18 I-20 and like, okay mics that he has. And he knocked out in like two and a half hours. He's crazy. And then um, I recorded the rest of it at, my parents' house. Because my dad, um, for probably since I was born until probably 2020, he's a full-time producer. So he has a lot of stuff uh, that he worked hard for and he let me yeah. use, like that one meme where it's like, I give you all my you know, nice recording equipment and the kid's just like making stupid like riffs. Oh. Um, <laughs> but, um, so then I recorded it with that, which was great. Um, and I'm okay at, at production. I just had, all, I had a lot of nice bells and whistles to, to push through it all. And um, so I recorded it and, and mixed it, and then we sent it to someone to master. And then getting more people involved, like Chris, to flesh out vocal ideas. I, I liked his voice once I realized he had a dope voice. Chris Root? Killer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, this would be really fun, parallel, especially on like some of like the metalcore adjacent parts. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and then... Yeah, and then the our first real practice that we all had, we did our the gang vocals for the record or for the the demo, and um, and then finish it up and then sent it out, um, and then and then yeah, and then we started practicing and whatnot. But I think we we no, we did have a practice before, which was just me, Benny, and Adam from uh, like bands like Watch You Fall and his band prior Atrocitus. Um, but then, because he was living in OC at the time, and then he had to switch jobs and move back to, to Oxnard, where he's from, I believe. Um, and yeah, it's just been kind of going ever since. So as far as the production side, considering that you had all that stuff kind of like at your disposal, do you yeah. find your, did you find yourself like really honing in and like learning all that stuff? Uh, well, basically. Um, like growing up, my dad's had studios and whatnot, so a lot of days, especially like elementary, middle school, would be like my dad or my dad's homie or my mom, or my dad or my dad's homie would pick, pick me up and I'd just be at a studio all, all, all day since I can remember. Um, we had a, so I remember from ages three to five, I lived in Tarzana, 
and we had a nice house at, at the time that had investors um, to do his thing because he just made a lot of friends because like his origin story is playing in bands and he had a pretty popular band in like the 90s like late 90s early 2000s like ska funk space which was like really niche back then but really was popping off like I remember he was telling me like they had revving dinner with like Jimmy Interscope with Atlantic yada yada and it just didn't pan because they wanted to change a bunch of shit that they didn't want to change because they're an 11 piece ska band so naturally like they did with no doubt um, they condensed it they wanted to or they wanted to condense it hire you know other people but so he was doing that played in another band and then kind of was fucking with production throughout the whole thing but then got interested into it and wanted to be home more because uh, to, to be with me and, and whatnot so we had a home studio so I really have been around all of that my entire life and it's pretty like it's pretty all that comes pretty natural to me like I'm very comfortable recording in the studio okay um, I don't really get is, is that a problem that people have uh, I maybe sometimes people get nervous. It's a different environment. It's really not like playing uh, with the homies, or you're playing to a click. You're uh, get nervous, whatever for whatever r- 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 reason. Like yeah. you know, when you're put in that situation, when you think about it, on an outside realm, it may be stupid, but just people get n- n- nervous. Because I, I mean, I, I've seen just not to piggyback off them, but like from being for probably 10 to 12 years seeing my dad track people there's a lot of people who suck and can't do it <laughs> but um uh so yeah and i learned little by little and then i got more interested into it for a while and i kind of wanted to do it and then i started working with some people and i'm like i don't have the patience for this i'd rather just go to college learn shit and then have that as my job and then have it be adjacent which thankfully it's been it's now adjacent to what i like doing which is great and um just kind of do it for myself uh and so i'm pretty okay like below average and all that but i i I remember taking a music tech class too in high school which they they offered which was more of the the technical side of things um with my dad's pretty like like, I don't know, like, definitely, like, white-knuckled it, and he's just, like, a, also just, like, a, a, a genius. So he's a crazy player at everything and makes crazy songs. Like, I've known multiple artists that he just, just he's doing everything, and he, they're just the fucking voice. Like, he's and he fixes it all. Fix it all, or, like, he writes all of the songs, you know? And then I, mean, I, I know he's done... He's That's gotten him to some other opportunities post those two bands I talked about. Like, he was... He played Warp Tour. Um, and to make extra money than just playing, he was, like, a TM and then a uh, bass player. He, he, he went on a House of Pain tour, too, um, which... Is, that's that, that Jump Around band. The... Um, so that's pretty much my origin in that realm, and I utilize that to do the room stuff. But um, it was just for a demo vibe. I'd only do it for like demos and to give it like that sort of feel. But if I wanted to sound professional, I'd go somewhere else. And that's what we did for the promo. And as far this as, new far stuff as learning, out. yeah, as far as learning instruments, because obviously you, you know how to play guitar, and like you've been around this, you've been around that game pretty much your whole life. Is there anything else that you play other than guitar and like bass drums? I, I'm okay at drums because I don't have access to it. We're talking about getting a, a lockout, and I'm so excited because Benny has an ex, a, extra kit. Everyone's like, I'll bring all my shit there. A lockout's like a rental space okay. that a lot of people use just so they don't have to go in and pay out hourly. This one time a month, and they can go in at whatever time they want. You know, considering if they have it if they have it split with other bands and whatnot and it would just be dope for me to just play drums all the time and then I'd just probably do something stupid like want to play drums in a band and use my time there but um, uh, yeah good guitar bass drums try to sing when I can um, but like I was making a lot of that stuff before getting into hardcore like like uh, like alt rock indie adjacent stuff like modern color vibes um, but you know I got addicted to hardcore <laughs> so a lot of that stuff's in the back burner but I was going through a lot of that stuff today like trying to pull out some new shit to talk about um, and I'm like alright maybe we'll, we'll crack open an EP real quick so I don't know really how the vocals work do you have to like do any preparation before a show yeah I typically do I mean if I don't that usually equates to me being my voice getting blown out earlier it's harder so I'll typically um try to do a lot of warm-ups um i take like a spray i just it, it maybe helps a little bit but it's a little bit 
like a placebo effect, I think, but and drink like shit to tons of water. And also other things like I was slacking on like doing my, my, my car, a cardio and just lifting weights. So doing that has helped more than any of, the, of those things. But yeah, I, I do a lot of that. And for this, thankfully, I, I have some rhythm. So for the most part, I'm like one, two, t- t- taking stuff when I do the vocals, um, at least as of now, you know, because we haven't worked with like a like a producer a pr- a producer yet. I'd love to work with like Taylor Young and maybe I'll just hate myself after because I, I suck. But, you know, that's typically as of now what it's been. Don't put yourself down, man. I'm trying. Don't put yourself down. Hey, man, so far, so good. Yeah, the stuff so that's far, come out, it's good. banging. Right. The people like it. Yeah, I don't do this. I definitely don't do the same thing I do live than on record because it's not like sustainable for me yet. Uh, so I, I try to mix it up um, with like the talking and like the other sort of like parts of my throat that I learned to use. I like watching you perform because you like to move around a lot, and I like I love when you say "show me your style." I love. <laughs> I watch so much. I, I'm a total like YouTube baby, so I watch so much live shit, and also just trying to make everything more you know make our shows more uh engaging in 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 any way like appealing to people (sighs) pumash like you know like when you're out there and like 90 at least what i feel 80 to 90 percent of the time it's either when some someone says some cool shit or some funny shit where where it's like oh this guy gets it i try to tap into that instead of because i'm not a tough guy i'm not a cool guy i'm at all and and and, you know it everything you know when you front really you see through it so and i noticed that and so all I'm doing, you know, is watching like Terror and, and Death Threat live videos and just yes. copying them, uh, <laughs> and, you know, because they're amazing. <laughs> as far as your vocal style, did you have a specific uh, influence that really kind of leaded you down that path to have your type of sound? sound? Yeah, when I was doing, when I was trying to figure out my style for. Well, I mean, so, yeah. Well, like when when Defamation was playing, I was doing backups, but it was like weird voice, too much like scream and whatever. And then I would just, I'd just be fucking, you know, honestly, like in, in the car. And then I was like, oh, okay, there was like some weird voice in there. And then it just grows and grows. And that's what ended up being like the... Um, demo which definitely a lot of like never any game influence these days it's a ton of like death threat influence criminal instinct like uh, josiah like i try to keep it as like pissed as possible angry yeah just to keep in and but also you know have it be like emotional in any sense because like i don't have any like you know like tough guy experiences or whatever so i try to tap into the other side of it which is like more emotional Uh so you said that when you're making ruin, you're trying to get like the baseline people down. Were yeah. you like you guys all kind of close or? Yeah, well, Benny and I were playing in Defamation prior, and Chris joined Defamation like last two shows, last couple of months. So, him and I and Benny were definitely the ones who were the most closest. Uh. The other people, um, we've definitely grown apart apart from, and they do their own thing, you know. And um, so, yeah, the, I guess those were the three baseline core people um because because i thought they were cool and it seemed like they got it you know and then as i grow older and understand it more they totally get it and they're dope they're my closest friends you know i mean really um i don't like unless it's with the, the hc homies i'm not a huge fan of like um like just going out with like my homies like i had a lot of friends from high school uh, that were like my first like real cl- cl- close friends and they introduced me like my other white people shit that I like I like listening to like stupid shit like Playboy Cardi uh-huh. and like all that weird like hyper pop shit they got me on that um, but we just you know people grow apart I don't have a lot of time these days too so really besides working hanging out with my girlfriend you know using the much needed chill time going to shows playing shows it's just spending time with my band um and so those are just my closest friends so you guys went on this like little three-day tour i believe right you got any weekender weekender. you got any good stories like best memories of the whole trip i know Um, you guys all rode up together correct or or some of you yeah we 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 did the only person that did was chris because he just had trouble getting time off so he was able to make the first and uh, the first and the third one but yeah we all drove on like two cars just we just did it um and stories i don't know i really enjoy going like the hard rock and uh and just gambling and and, and stuff and the liberating feeling of smoking indoors 
is great. Um, you know, um, not really off the top of my head. We were just kind of doing it, and it just was having a good time. I mean, if, in terms of, like, stories that I like talking about, it's more so, like, the shows were really fun. Like, the first show was really cool, and it was a great experience, a, a learning experience, too. Um just playing on a stage like that and a show like that but the show itself is fucking sick and the kids out there are fucking awesome they mosh and and, and they're dope like Danny r r was like telling me like I know we got some like goofy monsters was it cool was it cool like yeah, I actually used Jenny Word and I'm like we got way goofier shit going on over here dude it was way cooler um, and the the Bay Rocks oh, I love uh, we're, we're playing I'm, I'm, I'm playing there in September so so what uh, that 10 day tour where are you guys gonna end up going uh, uh, up and down the coast I, our, our plan we're trying to make it happen from San Diego to Vancouver Canada so, yeah so like going up um, and, hit, and hitting Bay Coachella Valley P&W um, I think Boise and Vancouver um, that's the plan and it's like I want to say 60% books so, so far we've only been doing it for a couple of weeks and, awesome. and uh, yeah and is this going to be the furthest that you guys have ever toured, or you at least? For yeah, I mean that weekend was the only thing that I've ever done, and I, I'm totally hooked. I want to do it. He would keep going. Yeah, it was awesome. You know, even the stupid shit like sleeping on floors or whatever. I mean, it was a learning experience. I'm like, okay, well, I can bring this to make this better. It's manageable. It's workable, and and everyone gets it. Everyone's cool. No one's like fucking dicks about anything. Everyone understands like what we're trying to do, and everyone's respectful of each other. So it's great. Do you think it made you guys closer at all? For sure, hundred percent. And the more crazy experiences that we have, the closer that it brings us. The more talks that we have, you know, because I'm. I'm really new and it's great to have someone like Sergio in the band to get advice from navigating you know the hardcore space and and you know and all that and obviously playing and other general life experience because I have lots of issues and quirks but um, it's great to have that and uh, and you know because a lot of what's going on in real it's like I never experienced in my entire life in terms of you know like Band dynamics, different situations, good and and bad. So it's really cool to have that. So as far as the touring, which place would you say is probably your favorite to play at? I mean, only done three spots. So in terms of all the places that we played, I like San Diego and Bakersfield the best. Um, Sacramento, I've got to give it another shot. The venue was, was 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 pretty cool. We played at Cafe Colonial or Connell or something. That place was dope. Um, just a mixed bill vibe. So it's a lot of people just not trying to mosh or whatever. And like I was talking to the test stream guys, and like we gotta put you guys book you guys at this DIY spot. Yada yada. And those guys are awesome, and their band kicks ass. So I probably Bakersfield was a lot of fun. Um, when we played, a lot of dope mosh, and it's just a cool vibe. Um, some of the kids are, are cool, and Coachella Valley is also really cool. Um, but San Diego is the most fun really? for me so far. Um, yeah, unless we just have a, a better show. I mean, it's hard because like shows get better. You know, maybe more people will know you, and then the show is becoming better, and yada yada. But so far, it's been that. You guys are playing uh, the Shea on July six, correct? Yeah, that's a big that. little little festival, kind of little fest type of thing. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's like just a bunch of lo- lo- local bands, t- and like, I mean, I think most reason why I wanted to play it because Silence w- w- was playing it. I think those kids are badass, so it's cool. I'm a little bummed though that it's on the same day as that as that Long Beach show. Yeah, that's a killer. I'm like. Hmm, okay. <laughs> Who wants to fill in for me? <laughs> no, but... And then we're hitting that place. We're hitting it a couple times this year. We're going to play again there with Ankle Biter and Broken Vow and a couple other bands. And then we're trying to get get a date there for the for the little 10-day tour. Um, as far as local bands that you've played with, who, who would you say is probably your favorite or the band that has kind of... I'd, I'd say influenced you the most, I guess. Like, what do you mean, like, what do you mean by, like, influence? Uh, yeah, I, I guess kind of the local bands that you like the most. That you like who, playing with. Yeah, who who are the bands you like playing with the most? Oh, like cool dudes, dope to chillers. Sides like, like provoke. Yeah, like I like you know the homies in Stateside are really cool. I love their band. They're pretty dope. 
Um, dudes in Bro- Bro- Broken Vow are really cool. And Test Stream 2, they're all really cool. Everyone watched the set, you know, said nice things. They also took care of us there. Um, shout out United Front Booking, I think, or United something, my first, whatever. But um, uh, besides that, um, Terrain was fun to play with. I like the people in Abstain. I don't know. It's a lot of bands, a lot of cool people. And and every little scene has their pocket of, of people who are down with the shit. So. You basically just said, like, all my favorite bands all in, all in one go so it was awesome. yeah and you know from from newer people to older people you know Darsum I think they're really cool um and yeah too, definitely too many to, to name off but it, it's it's really dope yeah. um so for our non-hardcore viewers what is hardcore to you I don't know man I've been only I've only been doing it like actively maybe three years like you know um but what it is to me which i i just have stolen you know is like is like the ethos um you know it's at least for what it is for me right now is the sense of community um the sort of uh generalized consensual violence that we all do and that at least the people that that get it are are doing for you know sort of like at least for me it's some sort of therapeutic reason and that it really brings people together and the extreme captivating live experience that that it is but i'm sure i'll get more and more and learn more and more as i go you know i really try to keep my, my head down especially these days um just to try to learn and do my thing you know uh and just go to shows play 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 gigs and you know put on for the people that are, that are dope and that are cool dudes and all those things that you named off would you say that's probably the stuff that you love most about hardcore probably because that's what it is t- to me you know so for the non-hardcore listeners again what bands would you recommend like a starting off because I've had like a bunch of homies hit me up. They don't understand hardcore. It's rough. And they think it's, they think yeah. it's kind of weird in a, in a sense. They think totally. it's weird, especially the dancing. Yeah, the the dancing is weird. I've had a couple of things that my dad has sent me and I'm like, "Yeah, that, that's me." <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, like bands, I don't, it really depends because I feel like there's a lot of people coming from different realms. People that are c- coming into punk or coming into it through the punk, uh, hardcore adjacent bands. People are going through metal, like you know, punk adjacent bands like Scowl and yeah. Spy, and then metal adjacent stuff like Sangu Sugabog and P- Peeling Flesh, etc. Um, so, I mean, for me personally, uh, I got into it because I was um, mainly going to punk shows, seeing a lot of like legacy OC bands. My friend Jackson. Who at the time, friend Jet Jackson, whose dad is Noodles from the the, the Offspring, because I lived in Sunset Beach and we were neighbors. Um, they had the way nicer house, but um, uh, you know, he was like, "You gonna go to the show?" And it was like Adolescence, uh, the Alley Cats, um, the Crowd, and I was like, yeah, "Yeah, sure." And I was just, you know, going to those shows, seeing other bands like Off, Melvins, Red Cross, TSOL, Di. Um, and then that led into like the Chromax pipeline, which is pretty big with a lot of like yeah. punk, especially back then. Not as much now. The whole scene is way different now. But um, no and I I think um, especially in Orange County, there was a lot of like, I mean, tons of fuckers <laughs> for sure. Tons, you know, a lot of people during COVID got canceled. So there's that aspect. So it was like a little bit scary. A lot of fucked up people yeah. um, on, you know, old and, and young. And so through that, you know, I saw Chromax Jam was coming through to play the Garden Amp and with a bunch of other bands I didn't know at the time, Terror, Dead Heat, Dare, Down Oppressor. And so I went and yeah, I did see the moshing. I'm like, y'all are crazy for this. This is gnarly. But it was cool. And then I Chromax Jam played and it was dope. And then I saw Terror after and I was like, this is cool. It was fun. Um, and was still really doing the punk thing, kind of getting into stuff. I mean, you know, like all, you know, dumb young people like me, I got into it from the internet, um, you know, during COVID, you had nothing to do. And my, my algorithm shot me to, you know, 197 videos, like the LDB stuff. And, and, and then I started getting into it. Like 2019 there. LDB stuff? 
2020 LDB stuff and 2019 LDB stuff. So I was like seeing like the Dare video, Foreign Hands a video, and then like obviously Hands of God stuff. So that's why I'm just so, so into that. Like all other sort of live set YouTube iPad kids. Um, and then, so I mean, yeah, go back to the question. Like it really depends on where you're coming from in the sort of aggressive music space uh-huh. it depends on what you're into then I, then I can re- recommend some bands to go in and then at least that's what seems to be the pipeline now they pipeline from that band and then that band you see I was pu- putting on and our OGs and you learn about other bands like I you know it didn't like it took me a sec to get terror because I didn't get hardcore like I saw them three times uh-huh. and I'm like this is cool this is dope and then when I just started to really really love hardcore I loved how much put on for everything and then you know learning about how to actually mosh and I'm like oh this shit is fire everything's dope that's exactly like the same thing I had yeah. it took me a while to get onto them they're probably we, I've talked to Jose about it but they're my favorite hardcore bands exactly yeah and same I, I'm I'm blasting this show all the time I am ecstatic to see them tomorrow it's my oh, first time so, so I'm super excited yeah it'll be my first time seeing them like totally getting it it's just you know oh, like post COVID first shows was going to see like I remember I went to like the chain a comeback kids show like Zulu and Scow. So yeah, Zulu Scow, and then go to see Drain, yada 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 yada. And you know, you know, you know, like people, certain people will make funny, but but yeah, like post COVID HC vibes. But now I'm trying to really, you know, do my homework and show respect because it really is a thing that is, you know, needs to be respected. You know, I see a lot of people who. Uh, especially like OC kids that's why it's really hard to do shows in, in any place but program or chain because it's just all these kids that, that pull up that don't really yeah. give a fuck they just want to like a lot of the a lot of kids want to party and shit yeah or they just want to party and shit you know drink do a lot of drugs uh, and go crazy and yada yada like my introduction to hardcore was he invited me to this big ass show show me the body Jesus Peace Scal Zulu that was like yo yeah was that the the observatory one yeah. Yes. yeah 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 I didn't go I'm so dumb I'm like I'm not gonna go and then it was no b- b- and then it was no b- barricade I'm like it's kind of like we didn't even go either yeah, yeah we didn't go either <laughs> we were there <laughs> and, but injured they, and out yeah we, we had oh to, yeah I, I heard the story but, uh, <laughs> to me like somebody heard me listening to see a space cowboy mm-hmm. at work and they're like yo that's sick and then I was like you want me to recommend you some bands and I recommended him like a list of bands that all sound different. So I got like you guys, uh, Abstain, Balmora, Sea Space Cowboy. I'd kind of recommend more bands like that because how I started was it was like Scowl, Zulu, Tsunami, bands like that. Just really big like festival bands. But it's tough though because then maybe they go to the show and they're not really into the atmosphere. That's that's true. But... Or they in, misinterpret it. Like, everyone's this crazy, big, tough guy that just wants to kill everyone. It's like, that's not really the truth. There's outliers and everything, you know? Obviously, there's the... there There is people that, that do do that, though, for sure. Yeah, but there's, like, a whole genre for that, you know? I mean, we definitely see you as, like, definite hard mosher. You're always dancing. You're always in the yeah. pit, right? Yeah. And so what, what do you kind of think when you're in that zone when you're really feeling it. um you know what's going hard. through your head it's my it's my therapy for sure you know i i go a lot because i just i'm like i don't know i i like um i think it's dope and sick and uh i think it's a little there's a funny aspect to it too but also i understand like the situation that we're going into at, at a show and that i don't understand you know, and, and there, there's, there's, re- you got to read the room at times, but you know, in the right atmosphere, I don't understand the reason not to, um, you know, I'm going to do my dance move, I'm going to continue it, and then it's going to hit you. Um, but I don't think about it that in depth. I just like dancing. I think it's fun. There's definitely a funny aspect to it too, like watching like the old school videos and seeing it's like when you're like laughing, and when all the homies were like on Discord and were like laughing at it, but it's like, it's like a laugh, like that's fucking sick shit. Um, Cause you know, we're nerds. I like yeah. as, a, as a viewer of your mosh you, you have like an angry style at times but then again you're like spin kicking it's awesome I'm trying to work on I'm trying to do my yoga and shit you know it's all a work in progress <laughs> 
Um, so at the last show uh, mm-hmm. that I saw you at was at the pharmacy. Yeah. Somebody dropped deodorant, and that was probably like one of the funniest Dude, things. Top three moments of all time. So is there any is there any other moments like that that just like have you busting up like that? No, that those was like the best ones so far. That that was I haven't had. You know, we only I've only played so many shows, so I'm sure there'll be one like that. But yeah, the kid falling on me and then dropping his deodorant, and then I asked him if he used it. He said, Yeah, he kinda, you know. I'm like, No, I don't know. You gotta use it, bro. No middle ground with that. You're <laughs> Yeah. You either do or you don't. Use it. Pack an extra shirt for the gig. Like, come on. Stay, you know. Dude, I need Chicks don't like that, bro. Come on. <laughs> for that gig. Yeah. I packed an extra shirt for that gig, and that extra yeah. shirt went to shambles. <laughs> he was like, I'm done moshing for the night. And then I seen him over there for freaking smoke, just going crazy. And I was like, oh, I think it was Wrath of Gods that came on. I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah, because they did the secret set. You, you got to. You got to. That was awesome, by the way. That little spot was was pretty cool. Freaking so dope. Um, and DJ seemed really, really shout out to, to DJ. He seemed really stoked on the show and wasn't upset by anything, you know, in any in any way. But um, it was really cool. And so it'll probably happen. I think it's a really good spot. That should be like you know like a routing for touring bands. Getting like, I I, I thought it was so crazy that it popped. Given that the lineup was just like all local bands. Like you know, if you would see that same bill at like Haven, it'd be much smaller room. I think so. Not like much smaller, but I think the kids were really excited. It is a little bit smaller too, but also it just the energy was just way different though. So I think if you did like a a, a, sh- a show that had a little bit more pull, it'd be fucking crazy. Would you think? Would you say that having it in that specific area kind of has to contribute to the to the pull of crowd as well? Yeah, be- yeah, yeah. I guess yeah, because the only other spot really in Hesperia is like C four seven, which is Brad, like local man records, and he sometimes does shows, and it depends on, on the gig. It's like more old school stuff, uh, but uh, yeah, for sure. And the kids there are freaking cool. There are some dope ass kids, uh, mosh and cool. It was fun. Which is more so I guess yeah, I guess because Pomona is like a little more spoiled with shows. Which is more of a reason that bands should go by there a lot more often than they do because. I mean, yeah, well, you know, there's only been one spot, and Brad only does so many shows, so now there's like an actual spot, and I mean, the owner asked him to do that, so I think it's good. Awesome. It's really, it's pretty far from any sort of like suburban area, and he, all the businesses are closed near it, so it's pretty perfect. And especially since you got you know Slice Gods shout out. Shout out Slice Gods. The way. That shit's fucking rocks. So that was dope. Heck yeah. That yeah, pizza's it, crazy. It, it was it was cool. What would you what would you score it? I would score <laughs> it. I'll give it a solid Dave Portnoy score. Uh, this is so funny because we <laughs> we, it, we just talked about this last week on the episode. I'll give it an eight. A A four, yeah. Everything about it I loved. I just don't love a, a really messy high. It's a very there. high score. Do you remember talking about this last verse? I thought it was great. I thought all the, the flavors and the ingredients, like the pepperoni was great. I maybe should, re, should re- rescore it and just get, 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 get the cheese to get like the, you know, the OG, OG rules. It, it, it depends because people say, well, I got a slice and it was crunchy, but it's like, yeah, because that's a pre-made slice. You have to get a whole the pie. When I got a whole pie, it was just a little messy, but when I had it, it was awesome. So the place rocks. I'd for sure eat, yeah, eat, eat there again. Yeah, it's a huge score. Huge. Well, personally, I love the pizza. I thought it was great. I think I, I, I've had, yeah, I've been to like the East Coast and have like really, really good pizza and it stacks up for sure. What were you doing in the East Coast? My mom l- lives there, so she makes it easy and I like to go like, uh, and I've been to like, uh, like, I went to Connecticut one time for a show. Like my girlfriend, and I drove all the way and we went to New Haven and went to a really solid spot and it was pretty Like solid. a hardcore show? Uh, yeah, yeah, we went to the last Wham Leg show, which is a spot in Wallingford, Connecticut, um, and it was fucking sick. I got there like it was like a fest all day thing, so I got there in the middle of the day because we, you know, I was trying to not like spend spend some time with my mom. Then we go leave. It's about like two hours away. Go get pizza too, yada yada. So I came in probably when Vomit Fourth was ending, but it was like Broken Vow, Vomit Fourth. Fool's Game, Wreckage, um, Balmora at Nomad. Um, yeah, and it was fucking sick. It was like just the local CT shit. Like Lumpy was there fucking just like doing the dumbest shit ever. It was awesome. Uh, just like, you know, because fucking moshing like crazy into the cameras and shit. And it was cool because like Sunny was there and that was, that was interesting to like see, see that just growing up watching his videos and whatnot. Um, so... Yeah, it was it was pretty dope. That that was oh yeah, and 
Anthony Fantano showed up at the last minute. It was crazy. You guys, you guys know who that is? Needle drop? Needle drop guy? Yeah, dude. Yeah, I, I'm a, I think I asked him like a super annoying punishing question at the time. He's like, yeah, bro. But <laughs> joke's on him because he showed up and then the show got shut down right then. Not because of cops or anything. It was just the like the pa- the main power conditioner or whatever just broke and the whole power of the house was <laughs> fucked. But right before Wreckage and Anxious was supposed to play. So, I mean, you've been in New York, Connecticut, and those seem to be like some pretty like high... Um, some pretty big hardcore scenes out there, right? Yeah. Last time I was over there, I went to Long Island, too. I went to a Long Island show. I was fucking sick. I mean, not trying to draw a line in the sand, but East Coast versus West Coast, where would you... Where would you? Uh... It's a little different. I mean, I've only been to two shows, so considering that, at least on Long Island, I the, the vibe is so cool. When you hear people on podcasts say it's like at fucking someone's Christmas dinner or, like, whatever vibe, it's a huge family vibe. And also, everyone gets it. Like, old heads, like, old, old heads uh, are... are pretty cool like I the one I at least the one show that I went to on Long Island which that was at this brewery in Lindenhurst uh, it was like standstill Victory Garden which is like an old school like taking back Sunday era hardcore band um, that uh, and that was cool some other bands were playing like inner love and it was like a more chiller vibe but they were moshing like like crazy and I was like this bill is like if it was in the west coast like this bill is like chill not a lot of mosh maybe no hard mosh maybe just like like more like on like the positive round like when you see it like a one step closer type of show but um no it was fucking sick everyone moshes I think Stan so covered Obvious by Blink One Eighty Two or something like that. That was actually really sick. Um, so and you know, seeing like a lot of you know people you see at shows, you know, who play in big bands that come over here, just chilling in their in their element. Uh, it was really cool. I uh, I don't. It's a, it's definitely d- different. I you know had you know I'd have to I spend a lot more time over here, so I, I couldn't say, say that. But some vibes are like family vibes. But also when I went to the show in Connecticut, there was a ton of kids that were the same sort of like I don't know standard TikTok kid over there. But they were taking all the punches and shit, and you don't see a whole lot of that. So they were just get, get, getting their ass kicked, and they're like fine. Um, so that's a difference. But I couldn't really draw a line in the sand. I mean, shows over here are super dope too. So maybe not the live aspect. Of what about the actual music itself? It's. I mean, I like a lot of the stuff that I like is like yeah, nor- northeast bands and things like that. But I love bands from from both. There's there's different styles that I like. It's just everyone's got their own d- different style. You know, they're pulling from maybe similar places, but yeah. there's just an atmosphere about either or. But you know, what do I know? At the, at the end of the day, it's just my opinion. So what's what's your what's your favorite hardcore band? Man, that's really crazy. I'd have to like look at my on repeat or something. But King top five right now is like King Nine, Death Threat, um, Terror. Um, I really, really like Age of Apocalypse, um, and I really, it just depends too, because I like all kinds of different stuff. I like metalcore too, I like deathcore stuff, so it's gotta be like a realm. In like, in the realm of like, hardcore, yeah, King Nine Terror, Death Threat, um, Mind Force, I'm really into like the first two releases of Mind Force, is my favorite shit, and I guess like Human Garbage, and then all the stuff all the bands that are kind of in their space of influences, like Internal Affairs, Piece by Piece, yeah. More to Pride, I like that stuff a lot a lot too. But it's hard because I love, I'm not really into like one or two aspects. Like I like a lot of posy stuff, like, you know, bands like Instead, Gorilla Biscuits, um, Outspoken, um, and the things like that. So it just really depends because I love music I listen to all fucking day. So Well, like Balmora is, is not hardcore, but they're deeply rooted in the hardcore scene you know people yeah i mean they're hardcore like they're 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 dope it's metalcore vibes but like where they come from and the attitude that 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 they bring with everything is you know like it's the difference between like metalcore and like capital m metal metal core stuff you know like it's different shows different bills and uh but they play with a bunch of hardcore bands so they're pretty hardcore pretty dope and a lot of those shows that they do they give off a similar vibe as like a normal hardcore show that you would yeah yeah it's badass and it's dope but it's different and like they'll do like like uh, I think they do like Black Dahlia murder covers and stuff, stuff like that which I love the mesh of that because I love because uh, even before Hardcore I was listening to like a lot of like Suicide Silence Chelsea Grin um, 
what else? Ch- Chelsea Grin. Oh, yeah, Carnifex. Stuff, stuff like that. Pretty entry-level death core stuff. Because um, I was spending a lot of time playing, like, Call of Duty. But, um... So it's really cool to see that come together. And, you know, because sometimes you want to go to those shows and see those bands, but the mosh is a little different. You may People may get more upset. So to see those two ethos and, and styles collide is sick. Totally. So the East Coast, it's to me, it's more kind of like a rap mixed in, like Bayway and E-Town Concrete, Gridiron type stuff, you know? Is that what the vibe you kind of got out there? Not rap, but you know what I'm saying? There's definitely no. There's. I mean, I guess there's like maybe more. I don't know. It's hard because I don't know every single band. But from my observation, I guess yeah, E Town and all that stuff. Even like listening to like Death Threat and Pain and Truth and King Nine. There's definitely that aspect, and that's why I love it so much because I love rap and hip hop and all facets. I'm a big like hip hop nerd. It's a lot more groovy. Yeah. And that's what I I love doing that too. And that's why I try to instill like a lot of the ruined stuff because sometimes, at least when I started, I was listening to a lot of Playboy Cardi. So to not think about it so much because then I'll think about it and then it just becomes like a standard like hardcore song I try to like do fun Maybe like so. rhythms on the guitars and bass and drums and like what are you listening to that's not hardcore like on a daily basis a lot of Amy Winehouse um, I like a lot of progressive jazz so like Nate Smith and JD Beck like new school but progressive jazz and I'll like watch like all kinds of like Zildjian live drum videos and stuff I'm obsessed with that but that, uh, I grew up on a lot of hip hop and reggae, so I listened to a lot, a lot of that. Big reggae and dub fans, ska too, but like entry level ska, like special skeletons, um, Hepcat. Um, not so much like the gold fingers and the aquabats, more like stuff that's rooted in more like reggae and dub. And like, well, Do you and, like Jay Boog? Like, what? Jay Boog? I don't know who that is. He's like a new school reggae type of guy. That, that, that's cool. I'm not a huge. Like, there's certain white people reggae that I like. Not, like, assuming. I'm just going off that t- t- tangent. Yeah. Like, bands like uh, like bad, like Tomorrow's Bad Seeds I like a lot. And, like, the Dirty Heads vibe. But I guess it's a little bit of nepotism because my dad's worked with them a lot. Um, and, like, their their first demo that they or their first records that they put out are just straight-up rap. It's not on the internet anymore. Or it's not on Spotify, at least. But that shit I like. So I'll go on all facets of rap my dad's put me up put me on a rap he like hates most of the like new school shit which is fine so like he put me on to like foo fuji's ac alone free self fellowship project bloat uh you know and then i go off and listen to other stuff like east coast stuff like big l nas um what is it the art of rap that documentary i watched a lot and i like that um getting pulled a lot for, from that and but nowadays like or stuff that's coming out nowadays i like a lot of like play Bacardi, Xavier Wolf, and I'll be listening to like straight up like weird like glitchcore shit like David Shoddy and like uh, you know, I don't think I can listen to Youngster Jack anymore, but um, or even like a like a Puya like or, or good Ghost Main, but I mostly like that one experimental like metal Ghost Main record. I think it's pretty genius. Which one? Uh, dude, I have to pull it up or something. No, no, you're good. But it's like the, it's the one. If you listen, it's. I'll, I'll, I'll show you. It's like the gray and, and brown. Oh, his newest album. Uh, that the one with like the helmet. Yeah. I think it's like a black gooey helmet, something it's, like that. I don't know, but that's dope. Uh, that's dope yeah. Um, I just haven't listened to it in a while, so I can't remember it. But um, yeah, I'm listening. To, I, I be listening to stuff. Um, I'm like a huge like Bob Marley head but like not top five I'm, I'm like on the the live albums a bunch old the old old stuff just cause it's like close to me in my childhood like watch you know my dad would just put on like the documentaries and stuff and and that was in my house a lot growing up and a lot of the stuff that he would a lot of the artists that he would like pick up and produce would be people like that in that space so I grew, grew for a big appreciation for things like that yeah I grew up like a degenerate so like <laughs> all I really knew growing up was like Zeppelin and Metallica and then Metallica's dope they're, 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 they're... what's the your best or your favorite record hmm I couldn't tell you mine is Zen Justice for All great choice that's mine too well that was also my first one my dad was like for so when i was in middle school he i don't know he said some shit like yeah my homie like messaged me on like 
Facebook or whatever, and it reminded me of these, you know, like, because they played in bands back in the day, and it, like, reminded me of some shit I was putting on. So we put on, like, South of Heaven by Slayer, and I was like, holy fucking shit. A couple, next week, he put on, and just for all, holy fucking shit. And then he put me on to Suffocation, the, uh, Whatever song, has, whatever record has League of in, in, in Veracity on it, and, and that just I went on. That's a pretty hard turn, right? There. Yeah, it's a crazy turn, but I was into it. I was like, this shit sounds fucking crazy. What record has the song Fuel on it by Metallica? Uh, that's my that's favorite. The, um, what? It's like I love it. Load? Is, is it Load or Reloaded? The lava looking it's one. Load, load or Reload? I don't know. I love that one. That's crazy. Okay. I think it might be because my dad always plays it. Yeah, it's got big rocker vibes. Yeah, like it's like it's like the it's like the weird emo Metallica era, early two like thousands. No, that's that 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 that's great. That's cool. But I I'm, yeah, I, I don't know. I I'm not super duper duper into Ride the Lightning and Mas and Master. Uh, maybe because I overplayed it, but. I do like just Black Album, Injustice, and Kill Them All. I like Black Album too. I like Red Lightning. Black Album's great. It's way overhated. It's got crazy parts. But I think you're right. Red Lightning is super overplayed, like everywhere. Oh, I just not a huge fan of like that sort of like. Like, they were still kind of like, I feel like they were still a little bit hair metal adjacent, even though they were trying to be anti that. That's what, like, Slayer and Metallica were trying to do, but there was still, like, like the long hair and, like, the and like the, the James Hetfield singing with the more sort of thrashy stuff. And, and, and it's not, like, you know, Dave Mustaine infested, like, Kill Em All stuff, because I love Megadeth, too. Um, he put me onto that, too. And um, so I, I just can't get with it. But I'm sure I'll turn around maybe at one point, but I'm, I'm good. <laughs> you had mentioned when um, when making the Ruin stuff, you were kind of vibing with Cardi a little more, right? So how much would you say as far as the parts that you wrote for Ruin, how much of an influence would you say Cardi had? In Sometimes life? if I'm in like a writer's block, I'll just listen to Cardi and just be riffing just to get like the more complex rhythms that I like that are like the specific to like the style that I like for Ruin. Um, yeah, I... I I guess subconsciously a bit, but like like you're saying with like songs that are more groo groovier that are I guess the East Coast vibe. Um, like to implement a lot of that more a lot, you know. With the uh, I mean, what I think about the what I do for Ruin is just rapping. <laughs> so like for these uh, these two new songs, it seems like you're kind of telling a story. Yes. No, I can't. No, uh, <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, the first song is uh, about. Well, I mean, I guess I fuck. It's about a guy who sucks, and um, the guy sucks, and you know he was our first guitar player, and fuck that guy. I mean, everyone. I, 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 it's, it's fine. It's whatever. I still want to be weird, but it's like across the board, he sucks. But and you know he's a, a creep. So I tried to write a song about that, and I tried to yeah like tell a story. I tried to really write. I tried to write lyrics that are like impactful, and that are dope, and especially in the sense of like I'm not trying to be at all tough guy so it's more like you know like fuck you or like this is how you like this is what your actions cause you know it made me feel the second one is just uh, I, don't know, I think it's just like a, I just try to write like scene lyrics or, or whatever it's I try it's g general it could be whatever you want it to be definitely the demo is like just tons of like um, I love oversharing like tons of uh, just scene shit and then like like mommy issues bullshit like that's what I'd be writing about and in between the lines and who Whoever can relate or whatever, but I'll wear that I'm like some corny white boy on my sleeve. Fuck it. Well, the this like <laughs> these these two songs that you guys have dropping, I, for some reason I felt oddly connected to it. I don't know why. It's fun to write like general stuff and and you know and like I'm saying like l lyrics that are impactful. That's what I really try to do, and I'm really proud of it. So I continue to do do it. Like a lot of times we'll just have an idea I'll, I'll, I'll write and at times I'll pop sometimes I don't sometimes I accidentally reuse stuff like I feel like I did for this provoke shit I wrote it and I'm like now I'm thinking like you turn your back oh fuck okay <laughs> you know like reusing some bullshit because I wrote that provoke verse in like 30 minutes um, just because it needed a part do, do you ever just like you're at, you're at work you're just chilling right and then boom like a thought comes to your head you just have to write it down maybe I'm getting trying to get better at like disciplining myself to write it because I'll have riff ideas all the time and I'm trying to get better at like mouthing it you know because you know, like whatever. into in, like a voice recorder yeah but I don't necessarily have lyrics pop in my head all the time it's gotta 
I gotta find where my vibe's at, you know? Is that is that something that you typically find, like, lyrics after you write a riff or get a beat going, or...? Yeah, usually, like, the process is, like... I, okay, in the example, because we're changing it up, in the example that it's me writing the, the, the demoed out version, yeah, I'll just do a lot of that and, you know, try to write vocals if any, if, if any riffs or parts need to be re reeled back a bit to leave more room, I'll do that. Usually that's the other guys saying I need to reel it back, which has worked. Usually I like how we're, you know, either me or whoever are writing overcomplicated shit and then they dumb it down a little bit and then it reaches like this nice equilibrium. But yeah, you, usually I'll just write shit and then I'll try to, uh, I'm such a psycho. I listen to all of my outstanding demos like 800 trillion times over almost every single day. So in the car, whatever. Um, so yeah, I'll have ideas flowing all the time, especially if it's something that I know I'm gonna be doing something on. So we tried to ask Abel, like, what's the process to start a song basically we got sidetracked so maybe you can answer it. how do you start just like with the base of a song before anything's written um yeah sometimes it's like an idea that either pops in my head or that flows through me when i'm playing guitar and then it just goes riff 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 and then usually especially in a hardcore context i'm trying to keep the momentum of, of the song uh -huh. solid on like a you know like same with how like you hear like old school like hip hop dudes say like you know making the beat imagining people da dancing you know to your fucking song and it's the same kind of thing so it's mainly just me writing riffs I try to get a starting point and then when I hear it I'm like oh this would be a good part here here there here there and then it just kind of flows so you and start making like the riffs and all that first oh no yeah I usually do riff like one or two riffs at a time, I write the drums. I've been doing like demoing and like MIDI drum stuff for like, at this point, like 10 years. Uh -huh. So um, I'm pretty efficient with that. And I'll usually like write the riff, I'll listen to it, and then I'll like either have the idea already in my head or I'll like think about it, you know, about playing so drums. So vocals are the last part? At this point, yeah, vocals have been the last part. Is that how it, it normally is for, cause for it's me- a, I Everyone's different. I mean, some people, especially, people who just focus on vocals just write a bunch. I should write more, for sure. And I do, and I, I at least at this point, maybe what it actually is is that I'm, I write a bunch and then I'm figuring out the patterns after, because the patterns are, like almost as important as the lyrics in terms of like making something impactful because try to make it fun, try not to be lazy with my rhythms and inflections with everything. So yeah, I'll, I guess my last times have been, if I have shit, I'll try to pull from there. And I'll just be writing about shit that's going on in life and whatever. So you kind of just have a, a bunch of stuff at the ready, kind of just picking and choosing what fits That's where. It's mostly been. There's been a couple of times where I'm recording something. And I'm like, this needs to be filled up, and I'll try to write something that's similar, or you know, and I write it for the part or whatever. But usually, I'm just writing a bunch, and then I pick and choose in terms of patterns. And, and and yeah, because I just don't want to get myself in a box. I'd rather condense it and make it good. Because it's coming from somebody that has no music, little to no musical experience, but I think I've just got a bunch of ideas in my head that I've just jotted down or just tried to really yeah. get full ideas out of my thoughts or full, I guess, writing mm -hmm. out of my thoughts. But I can't really put much else behind it other than the idea because I don't have a musical background. What's like the I? What's what? What is the just the lyrics. idea? Just just lyrics as far as like um, the music because I don't have any instrument experience, mm -hmm. you know. So that's really all I got. Yeah, yeah. I I, I guess yeah. The, uh, there's different train of thoughts. There's some people that I say, well, you you know, you just don't have it or whatever, or or it's just experience and keep trying to do it. And I think the biggest block for a lot of people who don't end up doing it is that they maybe have some thought of what sounds good and what they're doing right away doesn't sound good and they're like, fuck it, I'm done. That's like what I do all the, all the time. I have so many, or I used to, I have so much unfinished bullshit because I'm like working on it, I'm like, this sucks, fuck it all. You know, instead of just seeing it through all the way. And maybe sometimes l lyrics and vocals are gonna save, save the song too. You know, especially for something like a, a Ruin. Dude, that's kind of, kind of like uh, what I've seen, because my brother, for example, he's a real big artist, not musically, but, uh, like drawing and stuff like that yeah i suck at all that shit so he'll be he'll be sketching something up and it's looking killer but he doesn't like one little thing he'll completely scrap it 
just yeah. toss it and start all over. I think that's a, a big downfall to a lot of artists is just themselves. Um, and perfectionist. Yeah, and I'm a huge perfectionist, and I'm <laughs> the the. The ruin folks, you know, sometimes I'm too much, uh, too anal, but I'm super anal with how we play. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Oh, you're good. I didn't unplug it. Dude. That's OS. That's OS, though. Got the, you got a landline, bro? That's kind of hard. <laughs> Holy shit. This this last episode, too. <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot to unplug it again. Then we do the little doom, 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 doom. All right, and then it's going to be someone screaming, watch. It always is telemarketing. I'm kind of stoked. It's always the dumbest fucking noise. I think we're good. I want to sample that noise. I feel like that noise is sick. It's just like this weird, like, fucking white noise. Very weird. But it didn't play it. But definitely I want to sample that for something. I feel like it'd be a great intro. It's kind of like a, um, with a, like a ring, the ring seven days type of thing. VHS, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that would be sick. As far as just scrap being a perfectionist. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm. The, so. the, oh yeah. And they're uh, the guys in ruin. I'm a huge perfectionist. Um, sometimes at, at fault to like the the like the team morale because I'm such a dick sometimes. So I'm working on it. But I really want to make sure everything's perfect. Uh, what we're playing in off re record. You know, I'm working on. You know, like just trying to say it in better ways, but like uh, really have a vision for something. Like when I have an idea for something, I just want to meet it or exceed it. Cause so far it seems like it's kind of works, you know, on a creative sense is, is, is different. I could have good ideas, have bad ideas, and thankfully have a band that can filter that and add their own. Um, but in terms of like an execution standpoint, I think I have a pretty good I, I, idea of what sounds good, what sound, uh, doesn't, which really just is on the basis of like making sure the notes add up, the rhythms, yada, yada, drum beats and whatnot. But thankfully I have a team of really, really good yeah, m m musicians and good guys too. So it works out. And as far as the team, the teams that you're on, Ruin and Provoke, obviously, um, is there a specific member either or uh, that you kind of click with the most and kind of just gets You're the most controversy, creativity out of you? <laughs> well, I mean, it's I think it's fair to say because I've been friends with him and I play with him the longest is that our, drum, my, our drummer Benny for both bands. Um, we've been playing since my last band and so I guess we're about or about two, two and a half years now. And, and we kick it a lot too. We go to shows together and, and we flow creatively well. And usually the process so far has been like, we have, we bring an idea to the table. He has his little, little like one mic drum thing. So he, he records that over it, adds his own ideas, fills, yada, yada. And so I, I, I think creatively, he's really amazing. He's super- He's super good. He's super good, he's super hard on himself. He's like, ah, I'm whatever this, I'm whatever that. I keep telling him like, bro, you got a content farm. This is. It's an. It's like the. It's like the pathway now, you know, because you can't just have a ha ha hobby and expect someone to notice you, you know, uh, from in person. I've seen him put a tripod up sometimes. Yeah, but he's dude. He's got like fucking fifteen shows backed up, and he's like, I. I guess maybe just. I don't know. He's he's he's, he's tripping. He's very very good and amazing, and people uh, think he he's dope too. I would, I'd love to see those drum cam videos. Those are my favorite videos. Yeah, that I, me too, and people like watching it. I try to tell them, so hopefully I'll convince them to put keep putting sh shit out because then I'll because then I'll fucking get all popular and get picked up by some big ass band. I'll be like, fuck. <laughs> uh, is fine. he? Do you think he's more afraid of like what people would say? I I don't I don't think what hate can you some all hate that's on shit like that is super dumb like just lame saying like oh you did this wrong you did that wrong I'm like dope you know it just it's just people trying to bring each other people down yeah. let's see the shit you're putting out brother yeah it's like your band sucks but shut up <laughs> every time someone does some some hate shit I'll just instantly screenshot it send it to him and I'll write the dumbest response I can think of it's like oh thanks for the view yeah. thanks for the view and he's like oh I just disliked it okay thanks for the con the comment again. Like fucking loser. Yeah. That's how it usually. Even then, it's like there's only there's even no need to like talk about it because most people will see th through it. So saying something back, at least from what I learned, is like it doesn't. It's not really gonna do nothing but like cause this stupid ass Instagram thread, y you know, that you see like if on like regular stuff, whether it be like political or not, someone says something, and then it's like this stupid back and forth, and everyone else is just like everyone's just uh, everyone's just super upset and angry. They just want to take take it out on each other. There was a, what was his name Ethan, the guy that I met at the show, long haired, pigtails, pigtails, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Someone posted a video of him uh, 
kicking someone and the guy caught it and like threw him down. And he hurt his knee, I believe. Oh, yes, okay. He was going at it with somebody for a while in those comments. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, but that's just like, you know, I, but I see that because I came from probably where he come from. So it's just, just like, you know, what is, it's just old people who don't who don't have malleable brains or is like, this is not what it's supposed yeah. to be like. It's that with everything. It's that with like politics and like other social culture. It's just like, this is not, this doesn't make sense to me. It's different. It's new. Have you ever, have you ever like completely out cold someone, just completely knocked them out? Um, I don't believe so. I feel bad. I, de- I definitely f- f- feel bad whenever I hurt hurt someone, especially if they, you know, were like cool or like uh, ir- in terms of like um, wasn't like someone else being a dick or whatever. Um, yeah, like accidental. Like I, I hate if I ever accidentally hit you know any sort of like you know like innocent person. Kicked me in the head one time. Yeah, but that's fine, and and and, and that and that's okay. I think that that should be fine. I, I always feel weird when people are talking to me at shows, like, you know, oh, you did this, you hit me. I'm like, okay, or like, if, even if they're stoked about it, I'm like, all right, man, like, or they're like, sick mosh dude out there and give you the pad. I'm like, or I just feel like people are like rec- recreationalizing it in a sense. It's like, oh, you're fucking, you're scoring points. You're fucking trying to you teach us as a sport. This is like. It's one something that I love, and two is like a therapeutic thing, and it's just a reaction to the, to the music, yeah. and uh, and saying so, you know I try to mimic badass shit that I see in the internet, <laughs> but you know more like from the old school videos, not from nothing like no. You know, Any examples? Vids, uh, but you know. Uh, Japanese mosh style too. Uh, Forgot the title, but the one video with the irate I- intro, you know, like the as the fucking smoke clears. Oh, was, Vendetta. So, yeah, yeah. Um, was it Epic Mosh or something like the Epic Mosh one? But um, and then usually a lot of mainly like the ruined people would just go on Discord and watch like classic ass videos like Laid to Rest in 2015 or like World of Pain in 2015 and just specific videos that captured like just funny psycho moments. I think it's hilarious but also badass so I just spamming it watching it over and over again. <laughs> we've, we've probably watched the video World of Pain 1 like a hundred times. But, but as, far, as far as the moshing goes and people giving you the pad like sick mosh all that stuff wouldn't you kind of say it's kind of like appreciating the style kind of how you do with music you're appreciating different styles totally but I'm just kind of an awkward person and I just am it just it just makes me feel weird like I, I'm definitely not a fan of all like the pit highlight stuff on wow. social media as you know especially that's in it just feels a lot different than a lot of these classic or videos or like uh what is it? These some of these old heads be talking about like guerrilla warfare videos, whatever they're called, like from early early two thousands. Like I, I, I guess it's more appreciating the style, but when in that mode, I'm I'm just kind of in a whole different space, and it's like my therapy. So it's not more so like me trying to mosh for the other people that are there. You're you know, you. it's it's me and my friends. You know, yeah. the, 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 and everyone else, I can give a fuck. Totally. Yeah. It just makes you feel a certain way, and that's what the music makes you do. Yeah, if, for sure, and, and it's definitely. I mean, I need to go to like regular therapy, but it's definitely my 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 therapy uh, in a lot of ways, and my exercise too, you know. But I try not to hone in on that too much. But I do, I do think like if I'm going to the gym that day, I'm like I don't really need to go on the treadmill today, you know. And then if I'm like, you know, barely ate that day and I mosh crazy, I'm like I can probably get a Kaniac combo and be uh, okay. <laughs> that's what I'd be doing, getting a crazy fucking, you know you know mosh pit fuel you know so after this jig gig or whatever what he told me y'all can eat over there i do like go-to. eating yes especially after any sort of like weed or anything what's like the go-to spot after like a show that you go to mosh whatever there's only so many spots that are open that late so really it's just been in and out canes um taco bell may, may, maybe um I, I, East Coast has, from what I hear, and like Midwest has better sit down spots that are open late, like a Waffle House or like I know diners, like old school diners that aren't like chains are really big oh, okay. in the in the yeah. East Coast. They love that shit. Um, so, you know, but also diners are like generally more expensive with like less food and less quality. I think like a Denny's is just gonna spend a lot of money to get and stuff. But I could just I know that the Canes is gonna hit, so I'd like to get the Canes. What's the Canes order? 
Kane's order right, it really depends. Uh, the fucked up o- order consists of uh, the Kaniac combo, extra crispy, um, which is almost a must for me. I, I, extra crispy? Yeah, hold on. I, 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 you're, I, you're tapping into something new here. Okay, <laughs> it's definitely one of those things where like, all right, this guy's fucking, fucking up the line. But I, I love, you know, it's extra c- crispy and I love the crunch to sauce sort of feel. Yeah, you can ask for that. And he's, Kane, he's, he's bridging the gap right now. Yeah, you can get it for your fries and for your um, toast and for your um, chicken. Yeah. Do you just get everything extra? <laughs> I just say it, and it, and it usually, for the most part, ends up being everything like an extra toasted bun or whatever. Yeah, so I get the, that butter on both both sides um, of the toast, extra slaw and no toast, probably get a sauce or two extra. If I'm feeling crazy, probably an extra finger. But if I'm on a diet, sometimes the damn, or if I'm, you know, because usually I'm tracking a lot of my calories I mean th- through the day on a on a on a weekend sometimes I'm eyeballing it if I moshed a bunch I'm like um I think I can afford this you know type thing and and I just look at the scale the next day or two and then I just kind of learn and observe but um sometimes it's a fucking kid, kids meal or a, a three f- a finger it really depends I put a lot of thought into what I'm eating for the mm-hmm. most part like even yesterday when uh, I went to KBBQ with the homies all I had were like three street tacos to home me over at 12 and then I just went crazy at K- K- KBBQ and it ended up being a couple points down on the scale I'm like I think that worked I'm a I'm a big fan and that's what I you know that's <laughs> Like the like the hardcore community in the scene has made me enjoy going out with friends more because I'm just I just have generally have friends that are are cooler or not, uh, the closer friends I've ever had in my entire life. Like minded as well. And also like minded, we're around the same thing. It's hard to talk, you know, because all of my life basically is hardcore. So when I hang out with other friends, it's difficult to talk about other things. I agree. Yeah. How how long were you guys there? Because I saw some stuff on the Discord. Y'all were going crazy. Uh, this this traditional two two hours. The it's, it's, it's a time limit. So we we yeah yeah it's all you can eat. So you just go go go. You know we get a, bu- a bunch of meat. Yeah, that's their their. Uh, I'm not huge on it. You know, in, in terms of like as many plates as possible, as many plates as possible. But um. You know they're they're all about that going crazy with it, um, but you know yeah they'll like do these KBBQ trips like one or two times a month. I'm like that's a lot. I don't know if I can eat that much all all the time, but but thankfully we were good t- t- today. Shout out two and one in in Temecula for dealing with our bullshit. <laughs> yeah we yeah um well we're in like a we usually plan a lot all these things like on like our big group chat, which is people from like mainly IE and then the couple of OC heads so yeah you know we we changed the spot around like before the time before you know we went to Mr. BBQ in Fullerton that was a two minute drive so we make it work you know I, I went after work to you know where Sergio lives in the San Gabriel Valley and then we mobbed and you know we do it because we like hanging out with our friends that's awesome yeah so like you said hardcore is your life is there something that you enjoy that's not hardcore. Like, on a daily basis. Something you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, other uh, music. Like, recently I've been feeling like I need to have, you know, time for chill out uh, music. Even, like, podcasts. I like listening to podcasts. Not even just, like, podcasts. Like, like you said you hang out with your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah hang out with my girlfriend. girlfriend. We, we we do shit. shit. We, we go, go out to dinner, dinner you know, to, di- to different shows, shows that both of us can enjoy. enjoy. Like, we saw the 1975 at, at the Hollywood Bowl. Bowl. And that was pretty cool. cool. Saw, like, Bad, Bad Sons play. play. That, that was pretty cool. cool. Do other I mean, shit. Just some hobbies that you can have. Yeah, oh yeah, like, um, I don't know, man. It's so hard with all the time. My hobbies, I mean, my I guess it's the gym, but that's more of like a lifestyle. And I play music, and that takes up a shit ton of time. Play video games with my friends who are also, you know, mainly people in hardcore. So it's like, uh, it's a little, um, it's my special, it's, it's my special interest for sure. But um, I don't really have any other ones besides that. I was into rock climbing for a sec, but I just lost passion for it. I would like to get and do something like Muay Thai just because I have more regulated cardio that's more fun because I just am really bored of like just running or on the treadmill so I work and 
being with my girlfriend and doing bands takes up like almost all my time. So that's what I enjoy doing is going and playing shows and practice band practice. Even I, you know that'll be my highlight of my day is band practice. So because we yeah because it's fun and you know thankfully my band's good so um, they, it's fun to play and we're with them and you know we're kicking it before and after sometimes we get food just depends on the schedule and whatnot because I'm usually mobbing from LA and, and Sergio's mobbing from San Gabriel Valley we practice at a recess studios in Santa Ana okay shout out Hunter he's just the homie and you know it, you know we'll just be nice to, uh, to us and sometimes like have do our sound we'll bring like the sub in for like our stupid 808 drops that we'll sometimes do we'll fuck around you know with our samples and whatnot. You mentioned uh, rock climbing. You got the build, brother. That's you got the rock climber build for well, yeah, sure. It was built from that. Like you know, rock climbing is pretty upper body, but it's pretty um, pertinent, like on your um, forearms and on your core and on your lats. Are you more of a boulder or are you more of a boulder for sure? I was going into old. I was going to fucking. I can't believe I forgot, but a climbing gym in Orange, it's only bouldering. Um, and I liked it a lot, it was a lot of fun. It's just hard to maintain um, that and lifting, and in school at the time, and also, this wasn't, I don't know, I don't like the atmosphere at most climbing gyms, it's like very REI core, and that's not my spiel, really. Um, so I couldn't, you know, And then, but there's like, you know, obviously there's like a link, like a lot of people are hardcore into that shit, yeah. but, uh, you know, and that would be cool to have more people like that that I know, but in the area, that's not really the thing. We, we were not talking about it for a while. Yeah, and, while. yeah, I still got my, I got my tarantula laces, yeah. I mean, before we busted up our knees, you know what I mean? Because me and this guy, we got busted up knees. Yeah, I thankfully have been this good on the knees. One, really, really fucked it up bad. I was trying this one climb for days. How to fuck up your knees? Uh, I fucked up my left knee at the Zulu show. Oh, you you should just drop and you just drop and you like, fuck up your knee. Yeah, yeah. At rock climbing, yeah. So I was trying this climb well, you for. Be careful! You gotta hit the down climb. I was trying. So off, yeah. I was trying this climb for like three or four days in a row, and I finally got it. And then on the down climb, I slipped and I fell right on my left leg. What grade was it? V three. Nice. So I was really trying it, and I finally got it, and my leg just completely. Oh, it was terrible. Everyone was like, dude, are you okay? Are you okay? The, it was bad. And I haven't been since. It's been like six months. Well, yeah, knee shit. I can't even imagine. I've thankfully been... The worst thing I've had is a sprained a- ankle. That's it. That was a sound of fury. I just the the uneven grass uh, for t- that, like, gold set for in 22. I just run it a bunch. And then I definitely had a crazy reaction because I was like, holy shit, I just break my fucking yeah, ankle. That's, but, a, that's a dream set. Yeah, but I re- was just running on the uneven grass like an idiot trying to do some side-to-side shit. And then I just... I didn't have my shoes tight enough, you know, etc. I feel like like all my injuries are like stupid, you know. Like I broke my ankle, and I was like, "Oh, how'd you break your ankle?" And I was like, "I was just walking." And I, and I, and I, and I, no way! <laughs> I did have a concussion once recently, and that was kind of scary. But it ended up with like a crazy medical bill that it's like psycho. I'm trying to figure out how to get it down. Just because it's like I literally saw a doctor and sat in a lobby. I saw a doctor for sixty seconds, sat in a lobby, and it was like crazy. I'm like, so I just been I look even lagging on it. But thankfully, those things don't like accrue interest. So, but I'll get on that and try to get like an itemized bill, or whatever. Dude, I think I've still been dealing with a concussion to this day. Yeah, this I think scary. I got some type of CTE. Uh, like, it's not a concussion. Bro. I was having some. <laughs> I was having some shit. I was like, thought I put my fucking meal in the microwave and I didn't. I'm like, what the fuck? Some weird shit. Just because I. Well, it's really only shit like that only happens when I'm drinking and moshing. It's it's all bad. I was drinking and not watching out and I got hit in the head pretty hard because I just wasn't watching out. Head wasn't on a swivel. It wasn't. It is what it is. It happens and you you live and you learn. He do be scaring me though because sometimes like we'll say something. And then it's like a few hours later, and he'll ask me the same question again. Then I get a little freaked out. You warn me. There are some long term. I, th- I don't. I don't think that's a concussion <laughs> yeah. anymore because that was like a year ago. <laughs> I mean, I think. I think you know the the, yeah. the stoner part has something to do with it as well. But I, I bought my head a, some pretty good times a while back, and uh, I think that had to do a majority of it. Yeah, I got a big scar on the back of my head that my uh, that doesn't grow hair. That's what I hate about it. But it's like. Uh, 
it's I, as I was, I was four and I was just jumping on the bed, found like a metal table, my head split open. And I guess I didn't have health insurance. So my grandma took it upon herself to stitch it herself like she was like knitting or something. So it didn't heal right. Probably wasn't a proper, proper stitch. And it just has like a big piece of skin that's over it that from the plasticity. Yo, but shout out grandma though. So. I noticed you got some new tats. Yeah, yeah. They got yeah. any meaning to them? But what was the question again? Oh yeah. Um, uh, a part of me not really wanting to do it for a long time was like, it's gotta have meaning, it's gotta have this. And then I'm like, after I graduated, got a little bit of grad money, did spend it all, did spend it all. But I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna get some uh, and just kind of have, have the ideology of it be more like, I find cool art that I like and have artists art on my bodies and, and whatnot. So I mean, I, 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 I went a little fast. I got a couple in a couple weeks, but I do I do like them, so, you know. So they're just kind of more pieces that you enjoy. Yeah, that I, that I see on their flash or whatever. Like uh, the, I just, we you know this, uh, Angel from, Angel Garcia from like Dare and other bands like Field of Flames. He was in town and I just wanted to, to do it. Um, so, Cause you know, he's my first, first tat. So I just went through his book and I was like, it was cool. I saw it. I was not intending to get a forearm tat, um, but he's like, do it here. I'm like, what if we did it like more here? And he's like, fuck it, bro. I'm like, and at that point I was like, all right, I'll, I'll trust the, trust the process. But now I'm more so trying to just build out everything and not look like a, like a WWE, like create a character with just like small piece, small piece, small piece. Cause at the end of the day, I would like to be pretty full. And I think I've waited a good amount, you know, I think in my life to start getting them now. So I feel confident in my decisions. Like, are you more American traditional or are you more of kind of whatever? Cause American traditional is more like piece by piece, you know? Um, I think I'll do a little bit of mix, definitely American, Japanese, traditional. I'm trying to save a couple spots for when I got more money within life to like have an entire thigh piece, whole back piece, yada yada. So maybe like, set like you know, like the calf shin up will be, I don't know. I'm very indecisive with a bunch of things. My dad would take me to GameStop. I'd be there for like 45 fucking minutes. I'm so indecisive. And I ask for advice from all my friends all the time and they thankfully give it to me. So I'm just learning. I'll often ask about the, uh, you know, so far from what I've done, the artist who I work with, where, where should it go in the context of me wanting to do more stuff? Uh -huh. And so I've just been trying to listen to the professionals, but so far I like what I got. I do want to build this out a little more from here on just because I'm just, I'm just not a fan of just how it is standalone, but I'm just, I just be thinking about shit all the time because it's also on my body now. I, I've been wanting some leg tats for a minute. Yeah, I definitely want to build up my legs all the way. I want some, definitely want a couple generic things like a spider web on my knee. I think I'm going to get that on Monday and uh, just shit like that. But but definitely like the like the one on my shin, um, Jen, uh, who is who works in Torrance. She's uh, Lemus from Stateside, a, a girlfriend. I just think her art is dope and her shit's awesome. And uh, I just hopped on like a flash deal that, that I saw. I'm like, that piece looked really cool. I really want I want that ended up happening. Yo, Flash is a way to go. Yeah. I have a couple of ideas that are stupid. I want like a little like Joe Cool like chilling on my shoulder some 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 shit or like some, you know, when I give it more thought I don't want to be like, oh, it's an idea. I get it right away. But like definitely some some words some like the cooler version of old English, you know, some stuff you know, linking with like my heritage and whatnot too would be great in my family. Do you mind asking, like, what is your heritage? Mainly white, but I'm, like, t t quarter Filipino. Uh, my, my grandpa is full uh, Filipino from the Philippines and that side of my family. Uh, the culture ma mainly is Hawaiian because my family migrated during World War II. My great-grandfather worked for the Dole Company. And so he was pretty upper middle class uh, when they were living in the, the, the Philippines, traveling to Maui and whatnot. And, you know, the family basically was driven out, had to escape. From what I'm telling, from what I've been told, my uncle was a big figure in the rebellion movement against the Japanese. Because they, because I have had a lot of my like great aunts and uncles were killed by them because they were looking for him. They would just be like, "Where do you, where is he at?" They didn't actually know, and they just killed him or whatever. But um, so my grandpa, dude, I I loved his. He says them over and over and over and over again. But I love hearing his stories of just the crazy shit, like uh, like when. Like he was born while 
they were running from the, the Philippines. So, and he was lactose intolerant. So they would, and then there was no like a- animals in like the jungle. So they'd be like, yeah, they would fucking, uh, he'd tell me like they would um, boil banana leaves and then like feed them that as like milk and like crazy shit, very resourceful things. Yeah, but, and then they, so they went from being like upper middle class to being like in P- P- POW camps. And then eventually she had a really small house, which I was able to see when I was like 10 or six or something that's since been sold because it's impossible to live uh, in Hawaii as a non-rich p- p- person. It's a really big p- 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 problem. It's a lot of hunger issues because uh, people can't live, people can't get their gas, you know, et cetera, because it's really expensive due to like the tourism industry. You know, thank you, USA. Um, for- it's so secluded too, that's the problem. Yeah, it's, 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 it's yeah, but I, I've had the best fish and chips ever had in my entire life, and from like a tiny shack, because my my that side of my family's from from Maui, which is more the 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 rural island, so it's a little doper. It's not just like resorts everywhere. Yeah, my family's from the big island. Yeah, on the Hilo side, so like the yeah. farmers market area. It was cool when I went. Yeah. It was dope. So it's yeah. So a lot of, you know, grew up eating a lot of Hawaiian food. When I go to the function, a couple of, I don't know, a lot of the dishes that my elders know how to make are like like poor people food. You know, like one or two, three uh, cheap ing- ingredients. Like my my grandpa would like try this shit. I was he see as a kid. It's like rice, ketchup, sardines, and it's kind of banging. And, and the shit like that. Um, so so it's really cool to understand the culture and the heritage. I'm not like extremely close with that side of my family, but I'll go to the main functions. Uh, the food's really great there. So the, the more times I can go there. You, you know, like the katakata and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, it's a it's one or two things that they'll make, but it's mostly Hawaiian food and okay. stuff like kalua pork, short rib, katsu, um, things li- like that. And they didn't even speak uh, Tagalog too. Um, they spoke some other language that was more used in like the rural uh, parts of the, of the uh, Philippines that I don't even know is used these days. So and then that would form into pidgin English, which is what a lot of um, yeah, a lot of Hawaiians use because there's a lot of cultures mixed to get, uh, to get together. Yeah. Spanish, Japanese, which was like he told me like the crazy. I mean, at the end of the day, it's racism, but due to like the trauma of like my grandpa would tell me like I had a Japanese friend and my you know my mom hated them and then it it was like a moment where like it's okay you know the war is over like crazy shit like that it's very interesting um but also comes with tons of trauma you know and tons of things he's he's a bit of a gangster there's some parts that we disagree on like he's uh he's like traditional um asian immigrant conservative i love america guy which which is great and i can understand and respect but also he's a bit of a gangster he trained at the um the the chuck norris's uh karate school and uh he he wasn't a black belt he was red black but in that transitional process he he trained with him and in his class and then at the end of the day when you get into a place like that you really are just training for self-defense and at the end of the day kill people um so but with the with the utmost like discipline and, and, and whatnot um, you know, only fight if you have to, you know, type type, type of shit. Because there were definitely fools in that class that were just fighting us have fun. <laughs> it's more of like, I know how to kill you. Yeah. It's like restraining yourself. And also, he's like really into like shooting guns in like a competitive way. He like trains like IDPA and like he does classifications. He's like, and he does a lot of security work. He currently works as an ATM tech security guard, which is like so dangerous. I'm like, grandpa, please. But he's like, he'll be telling me like, you know, I'll catch him in some things like, you know, it'll be okay if I went out like basically in like a blaze of glory. And it's like, it's going to be pretty rough. And I had to convince him. And he's like, I think you're right. I'm like, it's going to be pretty rough if you died like that. It's not like a movie, (laughs) but in, and he does that. He often, for a while he was training or he was um, racing professionally in a, in time racing because he couldn't race in like NASCAR or whatever because he has one fun functional eye too ever since he was 12 I guess just some kid got salty during a game of tag and, and got a big stick and just shoved it in his eye and they thought yeah he, did, he didn't he didn't get a procedure or nothing it was just they let it figure itself out basically what do you mean by timed racing 
Uh, basically, not against people. There, there is a track, and they, and they went went out of time. And he has like a whole rack of like championships. He's just kind of that type of guy that just um, does shit that he's interested in, which is mainly like exhilarating shit. He loves. I guess he think he's a bit of a thrill chaser in that sense with the guns and the karate and the fucking the security. Like he'll tell me like when he was really into it, like w- working for like you know I can't you know, like high profile stuff. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. But yeah. I, we, we disagree on, on some things um, but that's I just understand where that comes from and comes with his faith and whatnot, and that's fine isn't that crazy that like you kind of started from your family kind of you know migrating and surviving and now you're here yeah he, he yeah, says like that so, shit all the time isn't that he's so like, crazy he's like if you know like me and your your your, your grandma didn't do this. You wouldn't be born. I'm like, all right, man. Or like, you wouldn't do any. Like, almost like he's taking credit. I'm like, man. But yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty crazy um, sort of thing. And in, in in terms of uh, my grandma's side and my dad's side, it's it's just pretty like. Polish, Irish, you know, some Native American, but most people who were born who have heritage in America, or some have some sort of like Native American heritage due to unfortunate circumstances. It's like this, the same family tree, literally. It's the pipeline. It's the same thing. It's the pipeline. We got, we, we, we got, same, we, we got that, thing. we got that mixed, but that white boy flow where we look white, but we're like, something's going on there. He's like a unique looking white person it's, for it's sure. My dad's side of the family migrated from Hungary and then my yeah. mom's side migrated from the big island Hawaii. But they're all, but that's full. Like, so you're like 50%. Uh, Quarter. Court. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because my dad's oh, yeah. white Native American. But you, oh, okay. So your mom's. And then my mom is Hawaiian. Okay. Makes so, sense. no, so your grand, so it would be quarter if it was your Oh, my grandma's, grandma's white. Grandma. Okay, yeah, so grandma and then, yeah, so it's a similar thing. Yeah, yeah, in terms of my grandma's white and my grandpa is this short Filipino dude that he that she liked, I guess. And he's still, he's still mobbing around. He's still mobbing around doing the damn awesome. thing. Yeah, he is so bummed at every aspect of aging. He's kind of a gangster, like, this kind of cool. He'd be like, man, I can't, like, roundhouse kick it anymore because he still, like, trains, tries to, like, you know, I still got it you know in terms of like cardio and whatnot and like him him being almost 80 bum that he can't spin kick anymore i'm like i think you're doing pretty good he's still got a he's still got like majority black hair and he's, like, st- he's still working yeah he's still working um he, yeah, he's he, for sure dude. I, he, he he gives me like some b- biblical reason why he still still does it but he and then he's had like some pr- procedures like he eventually had to get his eye fixed because it was calcifying um over like 60 years because he never got it taken out he yeah. just got taken out like five years ago um because when that incident happened they just let it ride and they thought he was gonna die, like sort of like a pastor came, but no, he, he, you know, crazy stuff happened, you know, may, maybe, you know, someone did something. You know, it just adds to the legend, you know, a one-eyed, uh, a one-eyed thrill. Yeah, he's definitely like, he definitely was like, you know, player of some sort, but he's a reformed man. He also plays in a band. Uh, it's like, they're called Paul Cavan and, and One Life. It's just like uh, mainly covers and some of his originals because his musical lineage is... When he was 18, he got a he was he got noticed by some... He went to... Or he got noticed by some people, went to America, he got a deal with Atlantic or... Atlantic, one of those big record labels, like a 360 deal. Um, and what, what, I don't know what a 360 deal is. Like, you know, basically, a lot of record companies back then were just taking full advantage. Like, most of the, the money of the revenue of the music was going to them, yeah. and then he just was on salary, right? And so then he was with them for a year, and basically, they give you the resources to make tracks. They're not rocking with it, or if it's not, I mean, I can imagine it being pretty hard in the 60s and 70s, some short, very dark Filipino dude. It's it's not what was happening, even in even in like the different sort of counterculture area. Even then, it's d- different. It's, it's not. It wasn't yeah. the time. Yeah, it's not the time, and it was a little different. I rock with that shit. It's cool. So, he's he's also. 
very experimental. He knows like theory and stuff, but in a pop music sense, he's pretty cool with it. So he'll play like old school originals and then like covers and they do stuff, you know, like, you know, wedding spe- spe- special events, uh, the park, if the city's going to hire them. And it's, 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 it's pretty cool. I haven't seen him just because especially nowadays, a lot of our gigs are overlapping, um, you know, and it's a mob. It's usually because he lives out in the, in the IE. So, so, you know, talking about your whole family lineage and whatnot. Yeah. I'm my bad for yapping. No. Oh. We, I, I really we, lo- we love actually. a yapper here. Yeah. I, I, really, I, 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 yeah, I, I really enjoy that. I lose, I lose my breath and shit. To you, who is like your biggest hero in, in life? Probably my dad. Uh, just because he's always been there for me, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, music and stuff, you know, and teaching me everything that I know. Also, he's, you know, taking me to some cool shit. You know, he's taking me to to Warp Tour because he played like 75% of it. He didn't play Pomona, so then he just took me out to Pomona. Um, and that was like 2011, too. That was a pretty gangster lineup, I think, because I told my homies about it the, the, the other day, and they were going through, and I'm like, oh, fuck, you know, fucking... I, don't, I can't even remember, but it was like a, of the time, you know, um, and other things like that, you know, backstage at gigs when I was young, I remember seeing my dad's band play at X Games and things like that, and and and, and that was really cool, and always be around music and, and whatnot, you know, like COVID fucked up a lot of businesses, right, and a lot of di- different things, and I have two half siblings uh, with my, you know, my dad, with my, with my stepmom, who we get along very well, she's very awesome, I love her very, very, very much, she's great. Um, um, so, you know, in terms of when, you know, my family uh, was taking the, the pandemic so seriously at, at the time, just things had to change change around and it, it became almost impossible to maintain the business. Right. So and and yada, yada. So my dad now works in the caretaker industry. Uh, my stepmom, uh, you know, was able to work, work at home, which was just grinding, grinding on, on that. She works in advertising um, for an advertising company. Um agency so you know things change and whatnot but also you know i he's you know people get burnt out too you know he was grinding and grinding and grinding especially when the my little siblings were a thing it was like more like you know up early working to tell late it's just not sustainable you know and, and yada yada so i think he's having a having a much needed break with all of it and i i respect that yeah. respect him so he's getting into all kinds of other stuff that's more like good for him because being in that environment tons of drugs tons of bad habits you know people too yeah that 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 too and you know bad deals or whatever happen yada yada and and it's tough on the mental tough on the psyche so now he's like it's very dope like when i started going to the gym you know because i you know everyone is super depressed during covid shit sucks you know your life is changing too it's like fuck the world and then we started you know we all started going together and now he's really into like you know he's Improving his mental health and like yoga and shit and eating right and so it's it's amazing to, to to see so in that in that other aspect of it he's definitely great and we can talk about a lot a lot of that more so we can talk about music and then we talk talk about you know things a lot like that you know um and and and, and it's great and and you know uh, us living because I have I moved out. I guess uh, six months ago, maybe five months ago, and that was a little like dramatic, but um, but now it's like we have like a better understanding of each other. It's not like this sort. Of, we don't even talk to each other in this whole like, I'm the overseer, you know, you, you know, yeah. Torpa vibe. So it's pretty cool for us just to be homies, and then I can have the proper. We have the pro- proper space from e- each other, so it, it's very much like um, I don't know. It's a cool relationship. You know, I got you know. Just forgot this being re- recorded. <laughs> uh, is he very supportive of uh, of your hardcore scene? Kinda. He he was more into like metal and punk. He was definitely like I think he had. He, I think finally I peeled it back. He was like straight edge hardcore for a second like throw he, like I asked him like what band he's like throw down and like this I'm like okay dope gangsta but. Um, he also is like older, so like a lot of abrasive music, which he endured a lot as a youngin. He's just like, it's dope, it's cool, uh, it's just it's just a lot. And he like I make a lot of softer stuff at times, like that stuff's dope too. So he's supportive. He just it, it's just he is on the same level, you know, obviously, but more than me. So in terms of like musicianship critique, so like he will shoot me straight, and he will you know. 
you know, and yada yada. And he was, he is very supportive, and you know, and I understand why. You know, being a, a a father of two other small kids, a, a two and a, and a husband, it's difficult to come out to fucking IE or whatever, and it's yeah. hard to play in Orange County. Too. Totally. So, I only see my 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 new band once, but the opportunities have been pretty limited, and and, and whatnot. So I can understand, um, and I never never really like had like really big conversations about how I feel about it but it's fine I mean I it, it's I, I think you know he appreciates it and I send him stuff and he's giving me advice on on band d- dynamic stuff whatever problems arise you know before I go to like a- other friends so it's definitely like not his thing but he did find I think the, the fucking pick canvas uh, took like one video that went crazy and then he finally got, got back on Instagram or whatever and it just popped up and it just me mosh and I was like is this you dog I'm like, yeah, and then at least he's like, and I'm like, I told him like, yeah, all this stuff, I'm not you know into all this. I'm like, or you know, like the filming it or whatever, and he's like, you kind of look t- tough though. So I'm like, all right, at least there's there's a baseline there. There's there's some foundation to where at least he's not telling me to my face the shit's fucking r- retarded, bro. Like it's fucking dumb. <laughs> Um, so that I, I like all these like all these other old dudes. So there's you know there's some, there's you know mutual respect. And you said he's straightforward with you with like about your music, like what he thinks of it. Yeah, like most of the time when he he'll just give me the thing that he likes, and then I can point and pick other things that he maybe doesn't. That's just on a taste perspective, like you know in terms of. Cause he'll be he'll, he's fucking with more like death metal stuff and um, like punk shit, but very rarely he's more on like a chill. He's on a chill, a, a chill vibe for, for for sure. And so, do you think that like, you can go to him and say like, "Oh, I have this riff"? Do you think you like single riff? It? Maybe not really. Uh-huh. It's uh, no, it's because he just he's not in the space and and you know and the context isn't there. You know, for like, Dad, you think you can mosh t- to this? Like that's at the end of the day what you're kind of going about when with a riff is like is this dope is it hitting and then behind drums does it make me want to mosh so no but like he would he's definitely he taught me a bunch of stuff with mixing and he, he's, he gave me notes on the ruin d- 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 a demo and um and things like that and other sort of songwriter perspectives like shit that i'd be working on we've recorded t- together it's just he's just you know fucks with more of the softer vibe or other stuff and that and that and that's fine so um yeah, that's kind of it. This whole the, this whole music jam that you're doing, it seems like you've been doing it forever, right? Yeah. But if if you would have to go back in time, what would you change, if anything at all? Spend more time practicing. I re- I wish I spent. I'm I've been playing guitar for at this rate almost ten years. Um, I should be better th- than I am because I'm in a lot of tons of like progressive shit too. Like I'm a big like Animals as Leaders fan and like other. P- progressive musical genres so I wish I could be like sweeping and shit because I was like I remember 8th grade like when I first started I was trying to learn like Avenged Sevenfold and like Slayer and I was just not as good but uh, me being in bands that are getting a little bit more serious I'm now practicing a lot more I'm playing songs that I'm like oh I didn't think I was able to play before so putting more practice in Um, and like I said earlier like just seeing it through just writing songs doesn't matter if it sucks getting better at writing songs for a while especially with more with stuff that's not as simple like uh like other sort of alternative rock and and what have you it's hard for me when i'm like writing it i'm like this just sucks i'm gonna start over all over again instead of just seeing it through because things change in the writing process so my own head is it's still my problem to this day obviously but um would change that and maybe not like because i have so much interest in other instruments so i'd be fucked with all kinds of other shit but also i i like to be like a jack of all trades so then i could eventually just you know have projects not with my current ones but i want to have projects that can just do everything on my myself because i like that sort of control um of everything i'm a tiny bit of a control freak but i'm working really hard on kind of like torture yeah like that yeah like that's really inspiring and like other bands that do that you know you know in in the space um but yeah the torture thing is extremely in- inspiring and, and sick as fuck you know it's dope i rock with that that shit heavy just like seeing you like out you always give me like a straight edge vibe and then dude yeah, i i don't know what the, the deal is with that thing at the show i saw you ripping a dart and i was like whoa 
I was like, I did not expect that at it, all. It's, at there, all. it's almost every single person I, I talk to and get in, in on like a, that, you know, we are involved with on a conversational basis at all. I was like, I thought you were straight edge, you're straight edge. And I'm like, no, I guess I'm just a, I'm just a fruity white boy or something. I got, I got that fucking, I'm just high energy cause I'm excited about shit and, and watching whatever. But no, I mean, it depends. I have like an off and on with like substances and like, like with weed now it's like, let's like sometimes fun, sometimes not. Uh, you know, drinking is like a social thing. For, uh, for yeah, me. totally. Uh, you know, because I have like, like, like alcoholism and drug abuse in my family. So I'll notice some like things that I'm doing. Like, that's why am I drinking alone? That's not a good idea. Uh-huh. But because I have some, I have some real, real fucks in in in, in the fam, and, and no one in my family would, 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 would get upset at me for saying it. Just like not just drug abusers, but like junkies, like you know, doing bad shit, being not nice people. But um, so yeah, I mean, I've exhibited those traits uh, for sure, and so I'll. I'll sometimes I'm the guy that just takes things too far. So I'm trying to work on that and see that and just be like, not just compulsive, like, oh, I see something, I'll, I'll do it. Which is like the thing with like shows. I mean, and like, I don't have to, I don't have to hit every goddamn pen that's offered to, to me. But so I'm, I'm off and on. I've thought about like just going sober, never like claiming after like just going sober for like a couple months or, or, or whatever. Just um, cold turkey. Yeah, it's just hard. I'm working on it. Some things are hard. Like I get really like, uh, stressed out and like high, high strong or like it'll be it's difficult for me to sleep without which but now I'm on the melatonin wave so that kind of has been working because if I'm smoking right before bed I'm maybe oversleep I'm groggy uh-huh. I got a lot of fog and for my job right now I can't really afford that I think kind of melatonin is a bit uh, yeah. me personally <laughs> I think melatonin is kind of like a placebo that's just how I see it it worked for me straight up I, 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 have, I have such a hard time sleeping without weed these days and I just had like an extra strength 5 milligram and that worked um, I, I don't think you should be taking it all the time all day every day it's more so like Insight. Obviously, with me, I, I I think I've been smoking until recent, like the other day. I've like smoked weed every single day for a couple of years, uh-huh. and so I and smoking weed produces melatonin in, in itself. So then, in turn, I'm limiting my melatonin receptors. And it's hard for me to fall fall asleep. So that's mainly what it's useful for to supplement for the natural chemicals in your body, right? So you shouldn't be taking it every day because then you're not going to make it anymore. <laughs> you got to cycle through. But I'm I'm really bad with the sleeping shit. I remember being even a kid yeah I guess even being a kid being up hours and hours and hours and hours throughout the night just not able to sleep so it's difficult so I'll try to like save a bunch of calories eat a big ass meal before or like you know other stuff that we do to sleep you know etc you guys mind if I take a piss? I gotta go so bad. Do your thing, bro. Do your thing, bro. This is the first time that he initiated the piss break. I'm leaving. <laughs> How you doing so far, bro? You feeling good? I'm chilling. Cool, man. Chilling. Anything you need? Water, more water. I'm, I'm fine. I'm doing great. Cool, bro. Hell yeah. I'm so weird. I love, like... I'm so obsessed with having cough drops all the time. You know, I used I used to eat those things like candy too, but yeah. it's like I, I, don't, I, I don't need one. I don't I don't need it. I don't need it yet. The the shackles of of halls, but also I've been I'm back on it because I've been using it before um, doing sets. It like numbs it a, a, a little bit. Oh, so you, you think that kind of helps with your uh, with your vocals? I mean, if it's placebo, it's placebo. Whatever helps me get better. But Gabe from Darsum. Tell me that he's been doing vocals for like fucking I don't even know. <laughs> I thought I have zero clue how twenty years, thirty years, twenty five, whatever. But um, I don't want to I don't want to overdate, dude. But because I, I just don't know. But um, it helps. Uh, and I, I hear you know I'm a, I'm a I'm a media junkie, so I'm on all the podcasts. I get all the lore. I try to get all the lore, all the fucking tips and tricks. So other people that I like vocally say they do it. And uh, the cough drops, huh? Yeah, or yeah, some sort of menthol. I mean, it's just the menthol part are, aspect. Those are a pretty good snack, though. Like, if you're a Straight candy up. guy, if you're a candy guy, that's candy a, that's guy, perfect. Folks. Calorie, I mean, shit, bro. Yeah. It helps. That or like gum or mints. There was a long time when I used to like vape. I could not vape. I mean, still now with like, the, you know, the the times that I have a cigarette or or, or two, you know, I'll um, just I like to like chew gum or have holes. I just love like the sweet aspect of it because my mouth gets really dry. You're a, big, you're a big snacker? 
try not to be because it adds up but yeah i mean i like snacks but i mean i know you're on the macros thing right? i'm on the macros thing so like snacks and like chips and stuff that shit really adds up i'm all i'm a snacker only if i'm if i'm faded or something if you're not keeping track of the macros what's your go-to snack like what are you really like what what's getting your t- what my scared? fucked up shit is like the um, What's like the like the Fritos honey barbecue little thing? Twisties. Yeah, yeah the twisties oh, are great. Those are gas. Yeah, those are really dope. Um, I can't think of a much right now. I like the Trader Joe's like cheddar popcorn. Trader Joe's. My girl's got me on all, all kinds of dope snacks. She's a snacker for sure. So yeah. she's got me on the snacks, on like a Trader Joe's um, vibe. I love Trader Joe's. I've never really checked spot. it out much. Trito's is the spot. My, I will fight on my girlfriend that she says it's cheaper. It's not. It's cheaper-ish for a significantly lesser portion, which is like, I guess for people who are like, you know, if you look at it weekly, yes, but also, I don't know. I'd be going to, to, to Costco because I eat a bunch of stuff like eggs, milk, and ch- oh. like you know. So I'd rather get that. But even then, these days, I'd be so busy, or I just grab some random shit, and then I like got two gallons of milk, and I didn't drink all of it, and it spoiled. Or like I know the I know the the kimchi's been sitting there for a while. I should have got the smaller portion, like stupid shit like that. I, I I'd be learning how to be an adult. It's kind of fucking stupid. I'm not a big fan, but you know, whatever. It's fine. So what about coffee? I know you're a big coffee guy, right? I am like coffee. I'm, you know, new to liking coffee. I used to be like, a, I need a bunch of the crazy coffee made c- c- creamer. And in the in when I was starting to go to the gym and stuff, I'm like, yeah, this is a lot of sugar. I'm going to crash. I'm like, good, good for me. So I just slowly and slowly and slowly did less and less or did stevia. And then now I just can drink black coffee off the rip. So I do like going to good coffee shops. And I live now, unfortunately, in some ways, really, really close to one of my favorite coffee coffee shops or just my favorite coffee shop play coffee in Fullerton um, and it's really good it's a little more expensive but they don't charge you for additions and like shots or other drink uh, milks and I do like a good high quality cold brew or espresso tonic um, espresso tonic it's, you know this it's like espresso with tonic a, a water uh, it tastes really good and there's different forms like I know play coffee has a yuzu tonic which I think I think yuzu is some sort of Japanese citrus yeah. drink so yeah it's just it's like so yeah it's like coffee and then I usually get extra so it tastes less like the, the coffee because the vibe for that espresso tonic and the yuzu and it's like a fucking that sounds really good it's really really good it's but you got you know and if you like the yuzu just get extra and, and that shit goes but it's expensive because yuzu is expensive um, and, but it's cool because I love the coffee nerd stuff it's bad for my wallet but people at places like play coffee are like really into it and they like you know into the sourcing and whatever you know I, I know um our guitar player Chris is now is currently dating um, a, someone who, who works there. So you know, getting you know you know talking to her or whatever about more insider stuff or seeing her story. It's like it's very interesting. It's very it's very cool. It's a fun. It seems like a fun c- career. It shows that they care about it. Exactly. Yeah. It's that, like it's not just some bullshit from from Starbucks. Um, and Starbucks, some things work. The water's dope. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get get their patented filter in in the, in the crib. That would be good. sick. It's a hack where you get the 30 ounce water for free. You can't fucking be. And it's good ass water. Yeah, filter. You're on like the road or something. You're like get some free water. Yeah, get like. Yeah, can I get four Tranta waters, please? And they don't bat an eye out that. So. That's awesome. Or if they do, I'm like, I'm gonna fuck. <laughs> you. Should, we're gonna start. You're still gonna give it to me for free, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the stuff I'll get from Starbucks, I don't like, or like, I don't necessarily like really, really sh- sugary, heavy beverages anymore i'll save that for like a food i don't like drinking my calories so i'll drink a lot of diet soda and coke zero is the, is the coke zero is great or like zevia if i'm like really concerned about my aspartame intake that's just stevia which is technically natural so i like that you mentioned like adulting is this the first time you moved out on your own yeah what's what's your highs and what's your lows about it uh, Lowe's is money because I was like, didn't have a, I, I was struggling with my last job before I got my current one. And then obviously then after that, I kind of work so many hours and it's a lot of gas to go back and forth. So that was really the main thing is just like struggling with money. And that adds a lot of, or, or 
coming at the other end of it, it's added a lot. It added a lot more stress, anxiety, and even stress on like on my relationships uh, for everyone. Yeah. More than I did, and then it you know it gives me a lot of obviously you know living with your folks, and then not it gives me a lot of empathy for other individuals who are going through th- th- going through it. People that I know and that I I, I don't know, and it's understand handleable. So really, just that. And then also just like just you know, the usual getting used to, to living with your with your with your girlfriend or whatever, but nothing uh, nothing too crazy. Um, the the highs, the lows of it been like you know just miss the fam and like spending time like t- typically when typically my uh, little siblings play soccer, so I, I try to make an effort to go to every soccer game p- p- possible every Saturday. Awesome. And then kick it after we might go to a diner or something, or even then just go like obviously Sunday I'm gonna go to my pop's place and, and that's gonna be cool so missing time with family it is hard like the balance of like me playing so many shows me trying to get to touring a little more working a bunch girlfriend you know is also saying you know want to spend more time with you yada 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 it's difficult you know and then i would just feel bad about it because you know i'm a brother too and, and it's a really interesting spot because they were born when i was 13 yeah um so it's it's just it's just it's something to navigate to, especially back that back then, like it, uh, me being a brother to them. Like my only role model would be like my folks, and then what I'm gonna act like my folks. And I was like, no, you can't. And then that's like you're gonna be like a you know parent, get upset. It's like you know, and then I started being like that. I'm like, no, I gotta be cool. I gotta be the the guy to come to, and and yada yada, and and you know, because and they they're, now now they're starting to get into like. Um, my you know cool interests like they play hella fort, awesome. So we're running it up on Fortnite and that's great too. And and, and we in you know and even my my dad's real into to Fortnite too. So you, you like in the no build. I do only no build, and my dad's and folks are big build guys, you know. So I'm like, I don't, I don't want to learn like this a whole mechanic. Like if I get into like you know top five one one v one, and I'm faced with a fucking nine year old who's watched like 500 videos on best building mechanics, and I die because of that, I think that shit sucks. I like, you know, grew up playing like pub, yeah. PUBG and shit, and and you know like Daisy, I'm just like that. Were you big on you big on Warzone? Yeah, but, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, not as much though. I, I guess I just do Warzone. I get a little bit frustrated playing it, and I, I just do like some of the fun aspects of Fort. I don't know. I don't know what. Uh, they definitely cracked the code with the no build because a lot of people weren't fucking with the build, and then it got everyone on board. And then the cult, the the the, the cultural and the socio cultural yeah. step they brought it in the game just made people f- f- fuck with it. And then they got some funny ass games. A lot of the times, my little city be, be playing those like fucking like. You know, ADD cracked out mini games on yeah, four, yeah. or like you know, or like the hood South London, or like weird <laughs> shit like that. But uh, so I'm like, you gotta. But I don't know. Low, low, low key, my little sister's cracked. Better uh, than you, you think? Mm, sometimes I get upset. You know, she's like, <laughs> because I'm like, why are you like 500 me- meters away, and then you just died. We're fucked. I gotta go get your card or whatever. But um, you know, but it's it's usually pretty chill. Um, and it's just nice just to, to run some games. Even when I come over, my dad's like, you want to play Fort? Like, <laughs> Duh. <laughs> yeah, like, because they got, like, like, they got the living room with the main and, like, a little setup in the corner. And then li- my little sister's got her thing. They're definitely gamers, for sure. That's awesome. Um, and, but, you know, in an outsider, they concern, uh, for outsiders, it can look concerning. But they, they, they touch grass. They, they, they touch grass, for sure. And I, I wasn't touching grass. And I came out a little fucked up, but nothing... Now I'm touching a lot of grass. So. There's like a meme I've seen, and then this guy, he was like, oh, finally, and he goes to touch the grass, and it loads up Destiny 2, like where his hand was going to touch the grass. It was so <laughs> fucked. It's looking funny. It's like, fuck. Yeah, I remember, play, like, there's pictures of me on the PS2 playing Metal Gear Solid 3 when I was like five, four, even in like, you know, diapers or, or whatever. This My dad was like, fuck it, play this crazy ass game. Nothing was off limits for the longest time until, awesome. but like, GTA. <laughs> but it kind of made you who you are today. Yeah, I'm, I'm psycho, psycho. Yeah, and the free internet, me getting on best score or whatever. I can't, I don't even like that shit anymore. Like I was watching a, a I was I, I watched season one of Attack on Titan and I watched season two. And I just forgot most of it, so I ran it again because I knew most of season one. And I'm like, this shit is too damn heavy. Too they do it too well. They do all like the sad and like the death shit and the dying parts too well. I'm like, I don't need this in my life. Life is too damn 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 scary. Fuck us scary movie 
Oh my god. Fuck off. I'm, uh, <laughs> I just watched Paranormal Activity for the first time again. Because that movie scared the shit out of me yeah, growing that, up. That, yeah, straight up. I slept with... I would turn all the lights on in the house. Like, scared yeah, me to death. Up. I watched scary movies back then. And then, like, I remember, like, just my brain just makes... You know, because I, I had a long hallway in the house. Oh, you know, like, fucking worse. With, like, doors right here. It's fucking shit. So we're we, thinking to the max. We got, we got this fake yeah. butler, like, uh, in the kitchen area. I swear his eyes follow you when you walk by it. Fucking hated him growing up. He was the scariest thing because yeah. all the lights are always off, and then all you see is these eyes watching. I I hated and it. Even worse, I was in when like YouTube was more un- unregulated and all like the the Red Arrow conspiracy theory videos. I was I was pretty into all that shit for a second as like a young young guy. Uh-huh. Just because I think my dad got me into watching like what is it called like Fahrenheit nine eleven or whatever, and um, you know just because it's like interesting or whatever. It's you know something to be outright raged at. So I would be tri- tripping on shit like that. What, what's your favorite conspiracy? theory um i don't know i i don't know because some people say that all that stuff is rooted in like bad stuff and i've yet to figure out why but or it's, it's i guess it's mainly like uh the culture that's been around it with like 4chan and whatnot but i mean favorite one <laughs> I don't know, you know, the con- you, the biggest conspiracy theories are the things that are true that all the government's doing and the declassified things that have, are going on, like, you know, the shit that happened in, like, Nicaragua or whatever. Like, uh, not aware. I, I want to say what would happen from remembering my, my, my history class, like, uh, the U.S. was trying to get either Nicaragua or some other company to nationalize their either oil or... Uh, Fruits or whatever to the Dole company. This happened in multiple uh, things where they the the America would set up coups against them and would basically like either hire individuals or rebel groups to basically oust uh, and kick out a, a leader and then you know put in a dictator or whatever. I forgot what sort of like mid- Middle Eastern adjacent company that ha- that or country that happened that they did to. Um, uh, uh, in terms of the in an oil context uh, for them, but that would happen a, a lot, which is just like, you know, it's, I mean, it's like what all these like weirdo conspiracy theories are talking about, like what all these people are doing, they're moving the chess pieces or doing yeah, this or doing yeah. that. It's like, it's all, you know, like, you know, like, like I watched a documentary the, the other day that was about all the QAnon stuff and how it originated. It was like so mind blowing and so clear because it was all just pe- people fucking with fools on 4chan and then people got into it and then the the mod the main mod on 4, 4chan then like said we can't talk about it and they moved to 8chan and then moved to, to whatever that the cue board yeah. run and it just became this whole mythological thing that all these like regular everyday pe- people were fucking with but QAnon um, usually tends way far right I believe correct like yeah it's far right, far right. Be- because of like the association with like Donald Trump and that he's the save this sort of savior of all the whatever you know crazy interdimensional uh-huh. pedophile vampires that are, are going on I you know and even then like when I was like 13 like super gold boy I like would watch Alex Jones and be like this is fucking crazy and then I'm like <laughs> now but the, but before all of that and before all of like the Sandy Hook stuff went down then I watched a documentary on that the other day and it's just fucking abysmal because he's just profiting off of all of it at the end of the day with his fucking vitamins whatever the fuck and like his supplements and, and whatnot. but it was more like um because I was just, you know, it's like dad got me into that, and it's it's all cool and stuff. There's like truth in some aspects, uh, uh, in in like the in like the ethos of it, but then it just gets into this crazy weird mythological place, and it's like what people want to believe, and you know, it's like there's no way the world's just fucked. It's got to be a reason, right? There's fucking these crazy, right? There's interdimensional, you know, Joe Biden's a pedophile. You know, they're drinking adrenochrome ba- baby's blood, like this crazy weird shit that's linked to just faith and, and like mythology like right it's eventually a good because they talk about at the end of the day a good and an evil god and the devil you know and then it's just rooted in this very boiled down line that's not really rooted in truth and in history it's just like oh the devil or joe biden or god donald trump is doing something like that's kind of what it boils down to and what the parallels happen to be so when you look at it in that context and especially after i watched that documentary the, the other day i'm like that's so insane Saying. Yeah, and it was just cool. Where, where about, is this like, on, like, Netflix? Yeah. yeah, it's a Netflix original. Yeah, we're uh, going to need the plug. Called? We're going to need the plug for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's pretty sick. Um, uh, But I remember because I was in middle school, and I was, like, a total, like... 
up like for most of like elementary and middle and high school I was like just like a pretty like heavy guy or you know at least like chubby to the point and with just like bad self esteem and whatnot yada yada but didn't think about fucking hitting the gym once <laughs> but um uh, so then I was just, you know, I had a couple, like, fucking gross-ass, like, Nintendo nerd fans in middle school. And then they would be like, go on the B-boards on 4chan. And I wouldn't, like, end to, like, really, like, net talking to people. But I would just see, like, stupid shit. And obviously, in middle school, look up, like, crazy, stupid websites. And just she said I'd rather unsee. I don't even, like, a lot of gore, like, speaking of t- torture, like... I'm like closing my eyes listening to those demos because I'm like I'm not a huge fan of gore and all that stuff like it's all just overwhelming and like why would I see that you know because you know that shit pops up in my Twitter feed too and I'm like that bummed me the fuck out but I can't yeah, stop up, watching it what's up with like 13 year olds like finding like uh, cartel videos like people just Boom, right in the face of the shotgun. They're it's, just, it's just everywhere. It's just unmoderated internet access. They're just, when you're a kid, you're just like curious. I hated it. seeing that shit as a kid. Yeah, well, you're like, oh, uh, you're like, I want to do it. You did it. And they're like, fuck, that was bad. It's like Reddit 50 50 or some shit. Well, those are. Those are fucked. Yeah, Reddit used to be crazy, I I guess. I was never too into, yeah, was never too into, like, Reddit, 4chan, like, heavily. Now I use it all the fucking time. I just look up question Reddit, and now I use it just, like, just to get, like, because usually when you're looking up questions and shit, it's, like, search engine optimization these days is just going to throw you a bunch of chat GPT articles that are all just keyworded properly so they can get you, you know, you know clicks or either you have a service that's related to it or something. Yeah. But I'll just look on Reddit to get like probably the best sort of unbiased opinions or not unbiased but more like un- unbiased on like a on like a, a monetary sense what about Quora Are you fucking with Quora that used to be dope yeah that's like answers.com I mean I I that's like people who are like looking up life advice on, on Quora and shit you know <laughs> yeah I've definitely done that a few times dude I love just going on Quora and seeing what people have to say or like ask you know the the, the stuff that people are seeking life advice for yeah, yeah one time uh, uh, an ex-girlfriend of mine got caught by someone doing weird don't get explicit but then she looked up what to do on Quora like how do I tell my dad like shit on Quora I'm like what the fuck oh, yeah. you do it use your fucking brain but yeah you straight up it's crazy yeah th- th- don't content farm that that one nope but, no we're good <laughs> but um yeah um the the reddit 5050 I think you would really like it it's like, why why would he like that he's into shit like that Oh my god, you like gore, watching gore and stuff? I grew up, my brother, okay, my brother. <laughs> I grew up watching it too, but I'm like, no more. I'm the, I'm the youngest of three, but me and my brother, um, we're really like interconnected all the time. And he was really putting me on to all the stuff that I like. And gore was one of the things. You, know? you like gore? I mean, I don't really seek it out, but <laughs> if it's there, I'm going to watch it. When is it there for you? Twitter. Yeah, straight up though. Twitter, you know, Reddit. I got a couple of like. Uh, this guy, yeah. this guy puts me on this. He, Twitter's you know, fuck. I, I've never been on Twitter in my entire life until like six months ago, and a couple people sent me like just p- people dying, and then it became my entire feed. But I, yeah, yeah, I, I real weirdly careful. couldn't stop sc- scrolling. It was very concerning. I was like, that bum, this is just bumming me out. Yeah, that's the problem because like the the, the school fight vids. I click it and it's just endless threads of like, that's kind of hard though I, I love to believe the, the captions like what that's like a like a, like a redemption thing uh-huh. like like you know like dude beats up his boyfriend and then dad tries to kill him or whatever or like you know bully gets revenge like stupid shit like that but I love how most of the time they're just making up a random story of some bad video that happened there was this and page this, like, a fact check thing that goes on it had like a hundred followers at the time I, I think it got shut down it was like a middle school in LA somewhere I don't know where <laughs> but the whole school just run fades with each other. That's all that it was posting. They'd find some shitty ass hallway and a new fucking guy, girl, don't matter. They would just run fades all day. And like, I was just watching endless for hours of this one school. It was insane. Lot, like a fight club or they're just beefing with everyone? Beefing with each other. Oh, okay. It's like underage street beefs. <laughs> Straight <laughs> up. Street, street beefs is hard. Like they got a, they got a uniform and everything. So they're just yeah. being at and they, they're, they're pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Like, they're throwing late kicks, they're checking it, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah well, it's not fights. awesome, sorry. At school. Yeah, no, it's not, but I did, as a kid, love watching fights at school. It didn't happen too much where I grew up, though. Really, no? No, I hate to be high school, no. <laughs> like, dude, every, like, every time I would miss school, they'd call me, there's a fucking fight right now. I was like, god damn it, I missed it again. Every time. 
Every time there's a fight, I'd miss it. It was bullshit. Yeah, I don't know. My my school mainly had like drug problem stuff. I had like a couple like uh, one friend and then like a couple of like people I knew who just died. Oh man. Yeah, like or like uh, or yeah, like or it was like someone went missing and they found out they they died. But like it's cringy. But like the stupid name of my school was like Heroin High or whatever. It's like in like the south south southwest western. OC area that I mainly grew up in, where I mainly grew up in. I lived in Fullerton for a sec as a youngin, but it was mainly like Huntington Beach, Westminster, and Sunset Beach. Which Sunset Beach is, is really nice. Have you ever, ever been there? It's the it's the town on PCH in between Huntington Beach and Seal Beach. Okay. Um, they're kind of trying to like fucking Huntington Beach gentrify it out now, but I mean you know it's pretty cool. There's like a mother's there. I'm like fuck this shit, but I mean I get why they're trying to. They're definitely trying to turn Huntington into like a Newport or a Laguna. Nice. But I understand because like the old vibe that HP had like pre pre nineties Nazi shit, it was cool, but it's dead. And the only people old that are left are like a bunch of conservative I- I- idiots. Like there was a Trump 24, 2024 rally there the other day at, at the pier, uh, you know, right, no, day after the whole, you got uh, convicted, right? Or whatever it is, indicted. Um, and yeah, and then like the COVID stuff, like there was, uh, there was, um, they had a bunch of protests and even the cops, fuck the cops in and in the HB because they really didn't do anything for the very, very disruptive protests that were happening during COVID and, and yada yada, but there was one BLM protest that was fairly peaceful. The thing that was start the only people that were starting shit was like actual Nazis do with like seven one four tats and like uh-huh. fuckers, uh, you know, trying to fuck with people and then it, then they did the whole to- then they were fucking like, you know, uh, you know, tear gas, get on the ground, crazy shit. And and you know, and then I used to for a while. I worked at a Mod Pizza and NHB, and 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 we're supposed to give them discounts, but I never did that. <laughs> yeah, fuck, unless like a manager was watching me, yeah. made me do it. I'm like, okay, yeah. fine, but it's like, you're not, you know, you're not, you're not doing your job. All they do is like displace homeless people. There's nothing going on at NHB. Because they just want to keep the old people happy. That's it. Yeah, yeah, because old people are, are attending the the city council and funding and yada yada and all that shit. But that shit's super lame. It sucks. Haita Beach is mainly lame. And and I don't really like a lot. I'm not a huge fan of like the filler cities, like a Fountain Valley, Garden Grove, or West Westminster. But they have good food though, like good like good uh good Asian food, like a uh, little Saigon. I love it over there. And uh, and, and like um, I don't know. So the HP is nice. I like going to the U.S. Open. I'm a big fan of that. They have like free sh- shows there too. You surfing anything like that? Dude, dude, I wish. I'm a clumsy fuck. I really tried so hard to skate. I tried so hard to surf. For like a year, I took classes and everything. It's my mix of like, I'm really, really scared of the ocean and like stuff. The wilderness too, animals, that type of thing, bugs. I'm, I'm not fuck with all that shit. I'm afraid of the ocean. I, I got stung by stingrays a few times too. So whenever I see shit, it's free. I totally freak the fuck out. Um, so I tried for a while. I just, I'm really clumsy and uh, with all that stuff and skating. I mean, I already do all kinds of shit that can hurt me too. And I'm, I, I, I definitely tried a bunch. And from how I dressed for a while, I wanted so bad to be a skater, but. It just it's not in the cards, and that's okay. I'll stick to the, I'll stick to making the skateboard music. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And then they can do their little tricks and stuff. I remember one time though, my, my old band, my old band, my first band ever called Free Lunch, did an acoustic set uh, for Black Plague. Uh, it was a Black Plague brewing event, and they they did a demo at Vans and HB. And it was like Nigel Houston and Joey Brzezinski over there, and they did it, and they mob mobbed over, and we played. It was like bad. We were the wrong clientele. We just got. A gig and then um, he knew this guy from JFA and the guy from JFA put on put, put us on but we were not the right people it was like one of my most embarrassing experiences of my life and then I was like sad walking out and then I see Nigel Houston with like two chicks they jump into his Mercedes convertible I'm like holy shit <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking crazy, but yeah, I wish I I wish I could do that. Surfing's fire, um, it's cool. I rock with it. Um, it does take the attention away from my fear of the ocean for sure, cause it's a struggle. Maybe I can try now, cause the last times I tried, I was like a, you know, no desire to try to build any sort of muscle or anything ever. So maybe you know, and that's changed a lot of things, like you know, with 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 me in in that realm. I feel like I I could never surf or skate. I'm fucking sick. Look at it. Yeah, we're, we're yeah we're, clum- we're we're clumsy mixed p noise you know. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm, I come from a skating background. Yeah. But, and I feel like surfing, I would kind of be able to get it. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of... Not a balanced guy. I'm just not. Um, surfing, I wouldn't be able to do it, I don't think. So, why do you think so? You like the ocean, though. I mean, it's, a, it's pretty translatable. It's almost easier in some aspects. I feel like that is... I, I feel like it would be so much harder considering the fact that everything is uneven within the boat. Just get a big ass foam board and then that and that helps. You get a big ass foam board, you learn to stand up on that and then you can get smaller or, or, or bigger if you want to go like really big long boards from what I, because my dad's actually good at skating and surfing. I, I got the clumsy fuck gene I guess. My dad's pretty solid. He's been surfing for all his life basically and you know, skate doesn't skate that much because he's not trying to get hurt. You can't really get hurt that bad unless you do something crazy or something happens in the ocean. But. Um, he's pretty good with all that stuff and he's pretty passionate about surfing and stuff like with my experience with the ocean why I'm afraid of it I was a little I was like 10 or 11. I got trapped like way out there. Oh, like, I got yeah. taken way out I, That makes sense. That makes total sense. Sorry. Yeah, and I remember there was a guy in scuba gear and he was like you all right But I was at the time like too scared to like admit that I wasn't okay. I was like, yeah, I'm fine <laughs> And I just he's remember scuba diving. scuba diving like he had full tank and everything. Oh, dude and uh, you were out there. Yeah, and I was rough. out there, and then I remember it took me like three hours to get back in, and I remember I looked under the water and I was pretty close. I was I was enough like I was like a hundred feet off the shore. There Ooh. was a big gray thing, like moving, and I was like, I don't know what the fuck that is. I gotta get the fuck out of here. And it just, I've always been afraid ever since. Dude, that's crazy. I've always been afraid ever since after that. What after. beach is that at? Laguna. Oh, look at it so pretty. I love going there, though. Seventy percent of the ocean not discovered. How could you straight the fuck up, How dude? Not be scared of that. Straight up. They said they, they find new shit like every fucking month or whatever. I don't know. It's that that um. Fuck that. Fuck all that shit, man. Why are we, why are we swimming in there? We're just in there for what? <laughs> nah, dude. I'm 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 also I I'm more scared of lake I'm almost more scared of like a lake too, because I hate the feeling of not knowing what's underneath me. I I'm at least cool with the beach. I can shuffle my feet. I'm always on ground. You know I know not to go too too too, too, too far or I know when the tide's crazy, um, just from living at the beach all my life. But dude, I'm going like have a suit or whatever. I'm like jumping off the boat. So there's been a couple times, especially when I was younger, like. I was with my family or whatever, and my aunt's hat just fell off on the boat, and instinctively, you know, trying to be nice or whatever, jumped off and got it, and then I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> and I, I had somebody to get me, dude, because I, I trip out, I don't like what's underneath, I'm, I'm just, I'm not. It's too, too dark, too. I'm not a fan of the unknown. The unknown is not gangster. I agree. I like to be aware of my speed in control, which, you know, sometimes you have to let go, but as of right now, that's what I'm, where I'm at. Would you ever like to know what is down there in the unknown? No, because it's probably fucked up. I'd love to know. That's the difference. Oh, I mean, I I love to know on YouTube or some shit, <laughs> so then I don't know. But yeah, I guess I would like to know because I'd love going down like the YouTube r r rabbit hole of like uh, everything. Yeah, shit. Um, I know that we're just off experience. We're running out of time. I just got one more question for you, and yeah. then you can plug whatever you want. Okay. okay, sure. If you had to talk to yourself either past or future, who would you talk to and what would you talk about? Uh, probably past and I would say, um, I don't know, go to the fucking gym, you know, have some self-confidence um, and make more m m music, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, the, like the, I'd probably get into hardcore sooner, you know, it's sure. been like in terms of a, uh, uh, the community that it's given me and the friends that it's given me that's given me advice not only just in the hardcore space that's been only beneficial and it's positive it's not like on some like street punk shit where it's like we're all just gonna get fucking drunk together all the time it's like you know very positive and everyone's you know you talk to Sergio who's building his life and his career and everyone's trying to you know we have group chats where everyone's talking about what's going on in their life and everyone's giving their advice and you know if they can give out a helping hand and we all see that every day with whatever GoFundMe is going 
going on. Yeah. So, um, big fan of that um, because you know just in spaces that was just you know around people that didn't uh, respect me or didn't value me in, in, in any way, and I was just like you know because I have a problem. I like really want people to like me and whatever, and that just doesn't always translate very well. So you know, keep feeding into that sort of negative aspect of it is just only yields negative outputs for for, your, for yourself and and other things like that. I don't know. And then play a fucking sport, you know, like more. Like I I gave up on basketball when I got denied to be on the fresh and the freshman basketball team. It's like fuck this shit. That was the only sport you tried to play? Yeah, I played like I was like in elementary school like boys and girls club basketball no club nothing i was um i was fine I'm, I'm okay i like to play i like to hang out i'm pretty good defensively my shot sucks i never really worked on it as much as i, sh- I, sh- I should have you got the finesse on the fingertips or something no i don't have the finesse on the f- i love oh, fingertips i need to do more practice I, I used to be just like to throw the ball instead of the you know so yeah that's pretty much it that's what i i, I would say and you, you know It'd be cool if you can listen to my music, you know, Ruin and stuff like that and Provoke. We just, uh, Ruin just dropped a two song, Provoke dropped an an EP about a month or so ago. And um, it'd be cool for you to listen to it if you want. Um, Otherwise, you know, that's really it. Guys, this has been Noah from Provoke, Ruin. Anything else you want to plug? No nah, man. Any up and coming shows? Uh yeah, okay, there we go. We um we're playing in uh when's this gonna come out? Uh next Thursday, uh the twentieth. Okay, well in two days we'll be playing in La- in Long Beach with Bent Blue, um Whirlwind, uh, ex- Extraction, and then after that, we'll be playing at the Midnight Hour with Ingrown and Stuffed On Sight and Human Garbage and Big Ass Truck, which I am very stressed about playing after them. Really? Yeah, because they, cause they're dope, and, and they're going to have a you know they're gonna have a big pop, I think. And then other stuff, we'll be playing Oxnard, yada yada. Um, just follow us on Instagram. You know, I see people like, where's all the shows? It's on the internet, G. Follow the damn accounts. Please follow our Instagram, yeah. uh, just if you want to see my, my my band. What's the Instagram plug? Instagram plug is ruin. dot oc. Ruin. dot oc on its. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yo, Noah, dude, it's been a pleasure having you. It's been cool. Stoked that you wanted to come on. Yeah. yeah. We're happy you did. Hell yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right. Peace.